Hail adventurers, this is Laughing Dragon Games, and we are doing a Halloween hijinks. I would like you all to meet our illustrious players. Uh, players, say hi. Hello. Fantastic. All right. There in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our fantastic Charlie. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Above her is Susanna hi. in the cloak with the tri-corner hat. Above her in pink is my sister and a very wonderfully witty woman, uh, Shannon. Hi. <laughs> in the, uh, uh, with the icon that I can never remember when I look away is our good buddy Andy. Hi, Andy. Uh, hi. Please call me Chaltab. This is Chaltab. All right, Chaltab. And <laughs> then over here we have uh, Mark, the magnificent, magnificent. Many M's in there. Ma 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 ma. How are you doing? Great. Fantastic. And finally, with a voice rich as molasses, it's Ven. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween indeed. Welcome, welcome everybody. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with a, a fantastic little bit. Where's my music for it? Here we go. Whoa, it's very spooky. Very spooky indeed. And it begins like so. I'm already making wizard wisdom saving those against frightened right now. <laughs> <laughs> One evening in this autumn season, six adventurers tried to reason with a map that had deceived them till they lost the light of day. With their bellies growing empty and their muscles aching, screaming, one weary piped up speaking, perhaps we've lost our way? Quoth the ranger. What? No way. With the rising moon above them and the chilling wind went through them, still our hero slog determined, dreaming of an inn to stay. Suddenly their senses scented the smell of pie and food in excess, and a quivering light did beckon them not astray. Quoth the goblin, that way! And their spirits, now rekindled, our weary heroes be did begin to push forward with a fervor that would not be tamed. At long last, the path did break through. The trees gave way to township and to a festival, wherein they might be entertained. Quoth the drunkard, Don't tell me to behave! <laughs> Da, yes. Da, 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 da. And I eye the drunk skeptically and put my hands up my belt pouch. You guys arrive around in this area right here. Can you see where I'm pinging? No, because yes. we are not on the same map as you. Oh. Yes. Wait, what? Boom. No, I said I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. Ah, here we are. <laughs> Welcome. You find your way. You walk into this bustling town. It's got two bonfires set up. Loads of food everywhere. There's turkey and meats of all kinds. There's cheese, bread. It's f filled with all kinds of really excited people just milling about and dancing around the bonfires. You can see a juggler over here. There's a, many a fat cat running around and, and, uh, on these wonderful trees. And it's just a warm, inviting scene that welcomes up. And uh, one of the townsfolk sees you and, uh, and comes on over and says, Welcome! Welcome to Hollowville! How are you, weary travelers? We were not expecting anyone to come this quite so late. To which I, I say I hello. around and say I say dryly, well, at least it's not Boloville. <laughs> Boloville? Oh, Have I, I apologize. been there before? for grimness of companion. Sergei is pleased to meet you as well. We apologize to come so late to your festivities, but we were lost in woods, you see. Oh, uh, yes. Would you be opposed <laughs> if we perhaps partake with you in these events? Of course, you should partake. It's Spirits Day, after all, and this is a time to celebrate. You have the life on your veins, so you should live it while you can. Come, come, take take your foot and take what you want from the, from the tables. The food is all for everyone here. Free food, you say? Oh, 
<laughs> Don't mind if I do. Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, my name is Arthur, as you can see. Uh, diminutive in stature, but grand in appearance. Thank you. He kind of gets down on, like, 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 puts his hands on his thighs and, like, squats down and goes, Oh, what a delightful person you are. Look at you. What an eclectic crew. Oh, well, what, what brings you this way, anyhow? A bit of a long story. A that, it's long story short, yes. <laughs> uh, we were oh. looking on a map, and we got lost somehow. I, I think we should have ter- taken that left turn at uh, Albuquerque, I think it was. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. So uh, we we were walking, and it's getting dark, and I'm... Uh, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, well, I'm a bit of a homebody, if you will. Uh, I don't enjoy night strolls, because that's when uh, bad things come out and uh, eat you. Anyway, so uh, we were lost, but luckily for us, we found this wonderful little town. Yes, yes. I mean, we are a little bit hard to get to, but I'm, I'm glad that you managed to find your way here. We're very happy to have you. I'm Thomas. I'm one of the headmen of, the, of this village. No, no offense is intended, of course, Thomas, but Sergey is obliged by contract to ask because sometimes companions forget. Just to be sure, this is not fairy town, yes? There are no contracts to the food, no staying forever or anything. Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> no, no contracts here. Please, partake of the food, enjoy the music, dance if you like, and whatnot. We, we've got plenty of good things to, to do right here. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I mean, we were trying to... Well, we were trying to get the pumpkin maze working, but um, things aren't really working out there. Oh, uh, did, uh, did a horseman come along and take a few of them, thinking that they were his head? <laughs> oh, uh, n- no. Uh, does, does that regularly happen? <laughs> Thomas, do you, got, do you have any bugs? Bu- we have I, a I have a frog outside. incident with a Dullahan once, and Arthur now asks that question around this time of year. Oh. It was always very interesting, I do say. Well, um, no, actually, um, our, um, well, our pumpkins are the thing that Hollowville is most well known of. Have you heard of Hollowville pum- pumpkins? Uh, no, to my best recollection, uh, why don't you tell us while we go off and sample your, your delicacies and all that? Ah, well, I guess, no, no, of course, uh, our pumpkins are, um, the, the land here is very rich in nutrients, and there is some sort of uh, magic upon the land, so they swell to enormous sizes. Our average pumpkin is about eight feet tall. Oh, that's so cool! Have I heard of high level pumpkins? Uh, go ahead and roll a knowledge history check. <laughs> Done. Uh, Amber sniffs the food, and the food smells delicious. I mean, depending on what you're looking at, there's cakes and pies. There are uh, ribs and steaks. There are is, there's just, at least a couple of turkeys and chickens. I am just looking for poison. Oh, looking for poison. Uh, give me an insight check. The history check that you roll um, then gets you... I'll tell you what it gets you. It gets you a, um, a big fat nothing. You've never heard of Hollowville or its pumpkins, but it does seem like something that, like, you would know if you do. I mean no disrespect, of course. I have never heard of Hollowville, but I am sure I would be delighted to learn even more of your great pumpkins. In fact, if you would be willing to let me review them over time, I would be happy to carry the news to the places I have been. Of course, yes, no, I would love to just, I mean, well, I mean, I suppose it wouldn't be any kind of showing the place at the very least. Uh, another, co- another uh, compan- uh, one of the townsfolk comes over and says, well, hold on, you're not going to take him to the pumpkin maze. We closed it down. I know, I know we closed it down, but, like, they do want to take a look at the pumpkins. And, and, like... <laughs> okay, I'll level with you folks. Um, the reason that we, we're not doing the pumpkin maze this year, which is really to the just saddening of everybody here, is because uh, we've been hearing reports of strange things inside of it. And, uh, you know, like some people have sworn they see uh, large monsters, and uh, 
or strange sights, and we really don't want to mess with that, especially on Spirit's Day. That is perfectly understandable. Perhaps that is where we can pay you back for a nice food, yes? We are adventurers. We deal with strange sights and monsters all of the time. And it not is over a much. problem in our neighborhood. Who would you call? Can I roll an insight? Go for it. Uh, with your investigation, by the way, Amber, um, you find you find no traces of poison. Just good cooked food. You might want to stay away from um, one of the cheeses, though. You're, you're not sure it's uh, entirely healthy. It smells really bad. That is the cheese that yeah. Arthur is at immediately. <laughs> I got 11 plus 3. I 11 will leave Puppy to his cheese and uh, partake of the bread. Mostly okay. just the bread. Uh, the, um, with a 14 insight, uh, it's to the, specifically on the problem that they presented. So, uh, I want to know why they closed it down. All right, yeah, they told, um, with the, with the 14 that you got, you're pretty sure that they were telling the truth. There have been reports, like, they're being honest about, at least they've heard things in there that sound okay. unnatural. But they don't know what it is. They have no idea. Do you ask that? Uh, yes. Yes. All right, so Vaughn uh, asks them, and, and Thomas turns and says, well, yeah, actually, we we don't have any clue. I mean, most of the time when, I mean, you get inside the pumpkin maze, and uh, we carve out the pumpkins to make them into jack-o'-lanterns, some of them, like, on the inside, so it gets kind of spooky in there, especially after dark, and most of these, um, most of these sightings have happened after dark. What does it sound like? Like a squelching and uh, a growling all at once. It's very strange. Mm, could be jittering. There are several people watching Sergei uh, consuming a whole turkey by himself. <laughs> Sergei apologize. He need much meat for bones. <laughs> may not be visible through a shell, but Sergei is very large man. Uh, one of the one of the townsfolk comes over and like places an entire barrel of some liquid before you and says, "Here, my good man, please drink up. It's Spirits Day after all. What wouldn't it be Spirits Day without spirits, eh?" <laughs> <laughs> it's most funny. I like you, Tulvarish, and thank you for your kindness. May the spirits be good to you and your families. Queen spider legs. One of the um one of the children nearby looks at Marsh Marshweed and goes, "Ew, beetles and spider legs." <laughs> oh yeah, they're so delicious and very nutritious, young man. Uh, why? I mean, they're disgusting. I mean, they like push around little balls of poo all the time. No, no, not dung beetles. Those those make great uh. Great biscuits. I mean, you know, like uh, carrion beetles. You know, the ones that eat your little faces off. Face-eating beetles? Oh, yes. And then there's some beetles that will go right up your... Ooh! Look! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright. Um, I, so I, kneel, I kneel by the kid and say... They're a good source of protein, and like uh, flex the muscle. The the child looks up at you and says, "You're really tall, and like, are those muscles?" And like pokes your arm. I go over and make the bonfire bigger with my create bonfire. All right, give me a performance check. Uh, what do I have as performance? Ooh, that's uh, five <laughs> minus one. <laughs> Sorry. Do it. Sorry, fire people. Go ahead and roll a d20. I got a four. Actually, if you, um, I'm pretty sure that if you guys just like roll a d20, let's see here. I, I rolled it per, uh, with my dice, but I rolled one there too. We got a better one on that if we want to use that. 
Yes. It's like a 19 on the internet. If you go over into settings, minus one. you can enable 3D, 3D dice. It's actually pretty cool. I got 19 Ooh, minus 19 one. Minus one, 18. Yeah, you make the bonfire massive. It just roars up into the sky, a column of flame. And you, like, throw in a couple of different colors, and everyone around there, like, everyone's like... <gasps> And then starts cheering, yeah! And like, like more people start dancing around it, and like da 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 da. da. And they're having a great time. <laughs> Arthur's just still at the table, and he is he is he is uh, e eating like a bunch of stuff because out of everybody here, he's probably the most hungry because he is uh, a very he is not athletic in any way. He gets hungry and tired easily. <laughs> uh, Richen will walk up to um, our attendant and say, uh, Good sir. Yes. Would you be able to point us towards anyone who has seen or heard anything that has happened in the pumpkin maze patch? Oh, certainly. Um, I go, go over to that table over yonder and, and uh, just ask for, ask for old Bill. Old Bill uh, was the last person who tried going through the pumpkin maze. Thank you very much, good sir. And she will attempt to walk over, but her three attendants will put an arm on her shoulder. My lady, is this worth your time? I mean, you have a, you have a vision quest that you must be following. And and she and she says, my my dear attendants, I, I I believe that we are here for a while. Maybe you should partake in the food and drink. I am simply inquiring as to the troubles that this uh, village might be going under. She hurries off towards Bill as the attendants sort of shrug at each other and maybe get get this some food and drink. Uh, can you go ahead and describe your attendants I, for me? Um, oh, yeah, Amber, um, what was that? Yeah, I didn't... I was going to say, I didn't know she had any attendants, so I was about to, like, like who is she talking to? Yeah. <laughs> are these attendants we can all see? <laughs> yes, yes, they're, they're normal. They're right. normal. There's three people. Oh, right, you're, 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 you're following. Follow our dear power. They retain our feet, probably. Uh, sorry, not feet. Background from a uh, noble. Yeah, yes. uh, nice. that was a lot of fun to mess with. Yes. I follow you to go talk to, go listen on your conversation. What does uh, Marsh mean? Okay. So you go I didn't over there. See what um, thing you pointed to. Old Bill is a he's an elderly gentleman. He's got uh, like nice long mutton chops, and they hang down fairly low. And he's um, got he's smoking a corn cob pipe as he uh, nurses on an ale, and he's just like like puffing on it casually as he looks around at everybody dancing and having a good spirits day celebration. I'm good, sir. Hi. How has your evening been? Uh, it's going pretty well. I am happy for that. Uh, I just had a couple of questions for you, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, go for it then. <laughs> All right, and uh, she will sit next to next to Old Bill and and say, "Well, uh, I just heard from from um your lovely leader over here that you might have witnessed something terrible recently." Oh. Oh, you made in the pumpkin maze. The pumpkin maze. Do indeed, yes. Hmm, yes. yes, well, so there I was, heading into the pumpkin maze one lonely evening all by myself because all those whippersnappers was too scared to go in there. So I had on in there, and each one of those pumpkins, like you might know, is like far above my own head. But and we've carved into each one of them. We've uh, we've carved in these big old eyes and stuck mm, tiny little candles in them. Well, they're not tiny actually. Each one's about as thick as my forearm, and a nice old wick between them, so they they burn long and slow. Get on with it. Those what? are big candles, Bill. Yes, very big candles. Yes, so my, you know, my cousin makes those candles, and uh, they spend hours on hours just dipping them in, and it's a special wax and a special wick, and it's a, it's a whole process. And I said to them, they should probably head on down to the what? But I put my hand on his shoulder and say, please stick to the relevant details. I'm sure your cousin <laughs> makes lovely candles. We were more interested in perhaps. 
the danger and the excitement that happened during your trip to the pumpkin patch. He kind of shifts a little bit. He's like, well, I mean, I don't like to... <clears throat> you know, it's, it's not all that fun, actually. You sure you don't want ra- rather hear about my cousin's candles? Would love to hear about it perhaps later. Well, okay then. Uh, well, so anyhow, I'm I'm walking down this this maze, and it's it's not very complicated. And mind, we don't want people actually getting uh, lost in it, but uh, it's very big and very spooky. And we're walking down the wooden maze, and suddenly I start hearing this squelching sound, and no, it's all very strange, and 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 uh, I I don't like it very much, and. But it's also, uh, it's a hollow kind of sound. I mean, I can't quite describe it. It's uh, squelching, growling, but like a hollow drum. And and then I started feeling the earth beneath me kind of tremble. And I heard it, cut like steps coming towards me. And then something grabbed at my ankle and well, I ran. But I, I wasn't running because I was scared. I was running, making sure that I could tell other people that there might be something to be worried about in that there pumpkin maze. How big was it? Can I? Can you what? Check to uh, nature arcana maybe to see if I can think of anything that would fit this description. Uh, go for it. Make an, a nature check. And Arthur, can you give me a performance check? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So with an eight nature check, you um, you think about it real long and hard, but there isn't anything flora or fauna that you can think of that acts like that. 16. All right. You put on an excellent performance. You start, uh, you strum your, your guitar a few times, and then you, like, look around, and, um, like, people start to, like, come around and clap their hands in rhythm with you as you, as you strum your guitar and play a little, little ditty. Actually, it's a 26 total because, uh, I have expertise in oh, that. Oh, 26. Ah, no, uh, <laughs> he, he is very good at two things, and that is one, performing, and two, persuading. Uh, roll me two d10s. Thirteen total. All right, so you make a total of thirteen silver as like after you, at the ends of your at the end of your performance, like they start tossing some coins at you. Noted. All right. Um, who else is talking to Bill? Any other questions? Yeah. How big was this thing that grabbed you? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I, I mean, it felt. Well, it, you wouldn't believe me, but it Try felt me, like um, it felt like a rope had grabbed me somehow. Okay, that, that sounds quite helpful. believable. Anyone else have questions for Bill? Say, who are you people? Anyhow. Uh, no, no, I, I'm Dan. Merely some travelers seeking shelter. We are mighty and glorious adventurers. We go around solving problems and righting wrongs. That's what we do. Isn't that a right group? My friends. Uh, Sergei supposes that is one way to describe what we do, yes. Uh, Sergei is just exploring world with friends and learning things. And maybe on occasion, if necessary, smash a few dozen monsters and give riches to poor town folk. But you, you know, it's, uh, yeah, Sergei wouldn't necessarily describe self as hero. Van stays pointedly silent. Truly modest people indeed, wouldn't you say? 
Actually, you know, this is a good. This is um, something that has just now occurred to me. Um, we haven't introduced your characters and descript and described them. So, why don't we do that? Yes. Uh, someone would like to go first. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I'll go first. I am Vin. Oh, go. F- Hello. Yes, that works too. Charlie, you go can first. go ahead, Vin. Okay, I'll go on first. My name is <laughs> Van Watal. Uh, I'm a high elf ranger. Um, I'm a little bit snobby, but a little bit lovable. I have a giant frog as a companion, and I'm just doing some reflecting, and I joined the group last, uh, so I'm the newcomer here. Hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. And your animal companion is... Giant frog rib. Rib. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Uh, then Chaltab. We'll go alphabetically, I guess. Is that okay? Next? Um. Uh, I am playing a uh, apparently young woman who claims to be named Amber, although you're not sure if either of those things are actually true. Um. She is an eldritch knight fighter, stern, serious, and uh, somewhat melancholy. All right. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, uh, any other notable characteristics? Uh, she has scars on her arms, legs, and face. Uh, she's clearly seen quite a lot of battle. Fantastic. Uh, Mark, you're next in alphabetical order. Okay, so my character is a uh, brown, or sorry, a blonde and white furred fey corgi. He honestly does look like a dog, only he stands on his hind legs pretty much all the time. He is incredibly loquacious. Uh, he's also a legitimately nice person. He adventures because um, he sees this group as, you know, people that are helping people and themselves need help because... He is, he is uh, a very warm and charming person. Uh, he is also incredibly uh, foppish and slightly effeminate, so he is constantly uh, going off on dramatic tangents every once in a while, as bards are wont to do. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay, then. And that means... Arthur's my best friend. <laughs> uh, Shannon, I believe you're next. Um, I'm playing uh, Marsh Leech. He is a um, a, a tallish goblin uh, with a round uh, face, very uh, offset yellow eyes. She kind of looks like a frog herself. And uh, she's come from the uh, Swamplands, where she uh, learned how to uh, learn the Druidic secrets of the land. And after helping out her family um, from you know, uh, a disease in the area, she decided to travel around, and she loves baking with bugs. In fact, she's gonna go over and check out those cobwebs, see if there's anything she can, you know, rustle up together. Go ahead and give me an investigation check for that, and while you're investigating, (laughs) uh, Steven, Ven, go. I am Ven. I am playing Sergei, who is a Russian turtle, a barbarian monk who Adventures out of curiosity and to go help people and to learn how to do things. He wasn't born a barbarian. He actually got beat up by a tribe and then wound up eventually talking his way into getting adopted and learning their customs. So he has claws tattooed in ritual patterns and colors and his turtle skin is all covered in tribal symbology and he has monk robes around his shelling. It's a pretty colorful but odd display on something that is six and a half feet tall and 450 pounds. <laughs> and he is also incredibly inclined to being scary without knowing he's being scary because, again, he is just very large and very grass, deep voice and very muscly. He's also probably delicious, but that's a fault that we haven't yet <laughs> learned about. Arthur would never even think of that. He just views you as a very nice, big, friendly person who keeps clowns away from him. 
Fantastic. Yes. And you do have you do have a companion yourself, don't you? Sergey has a companion that he calls his wife. It is his <laughs> warhammer, Cassandra, who is sapient and can actually speak and read herself. Normally they get along as long as he's not deliberately trying not to kill the servants of Umberley because it has a holy quest. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and that brings us all the way to, to the end with uh, Susie. Uh, Ritten Baklath is a triton, so um, rather tall, blue skin, um, shock of very uh, almost white hairs, uh, tinged uh, light blue, um, but very short, cropped back. Um, her clothes are, are quite fine, um, although very plain, uh, chainmail. Um, she's, she definitely has the look of a warrior, although despite her 71 years of age, she definitely has that spry sort of um, young, young feel about her. Uh. Um, lots of energy. Um, she has the one ornate thing she has is a hilt of a sword by her side. Um, it is, it is, it is very different from her other more dark toned clothing. It is very bright, um, and has a, has a bit of a glow to it. Um, uh, with her are three retainers, um, very stoic, stoically faced Triton, uh, attendants to her company and to her quest. Um, she has recently acquired the, the hilt of the sword, which is the sun blade, um, on a vision quest that she followed and is now seeking for the rest of her, of her destiny. Oh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. It's fantastic. We got ourselves quite the band here. Um, so yeah, old Bill is just kind of like looking at each of you as you, as you do introduce yourselves and like go off and do your, we run things like, so you're gonna go into the the pumpkin maze? I believe that's the plan, the plan if I'm not mistaken. That sounds like the, the correct course of action. Yes. Oh, you you might want to be careful. That place is no joke at all. You've been kind enough. Your village has to uh, feed us and shelter us. So I suppose we should return the favor by killing your monsters. Don't worry, we will not let your ambitions for pumpkin perfection be squashed. Oh, <laughs> several pumpkins might get squashed in the process. But yes, I, that may happen. Yeah, uh, that I cannot. Hammer has a mind of its own. It it kind of does. It it really great at poetry. Did you know? Cassandra's poetry is almost as sweet as she is in motion. Sergey always appreciate her. Also, uh, not to creep out villagers too much. Sergey is not crazy. He is not talking to Hammer out of misplaced affection. Hammer actually does talk and think. One of the villagers, actually, uh, the townsfolk, they kind of pipe up and say, I talk to my Hammer all the time! And another person's like, Tom, you idiot, shut up! Wait, and, uh, there are multiple talking Hammers? Yes, this hammer doesn't like... talk, it's, he's a blacksmith. Oh, uh, so it sings then when it strikes the steel. I get it, it's a euphemism, an analogy of sorts. No, I talk to my hammer all the time because my hammer gives better advice than anyone else in this town. And there's some laughter and like somebody throws a piece of cheese at him. Sergey, <laughs> sympathize with your good fellow. <laughs> Is anybody going to get that cheese or no? Oh, Arthur is kind of going for it already. <laughs> Free cheese! That's okay. The, the right. children are very yeah, happy nothing. to see Arthur like go after the cheese. <laughs> laughing and everything else. Um, so, um, the headman Thomas comes over and says, Oh, so, <clears throat> so you actually are adventurers. We are yes, indeed. This is really true. Hmm. Oh, you should go to... Actually, no, it's it's... Well, it's kind of like blue cheese, but it's gone another direction. Uh, anyway, um, mm -hmm. would you... I mean, what, what, what are your uh, rates? I mean, we're not a particularly uh, prosperous town, but we, we do all right. We might be able to pay you. You have given us 
a great deal of entertainment and food already. Sergei would feel great guilt in taking any sort of currency from you as well. If you would instead permit Sergei just to rest and enjoy with you in the morning if we return alive, Sergei will be content with this. Although, Sergei cannot speak for his companions. Thomas actually, like, looks at you all, like, really relieved and like, oh, that's, that's wonderful to hear. I mean, like, well, we do have a little bit of gold set aside, so we, we, I will see you properly compensated, but still, thank you. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. Say that we will likely cause a lot of property damage for the night. This is actually something that I've noticed (laughs) happens a lot. I'm trying to build team building exercises to reduce collateral damage. Mixed results have followed. We will do our best. <laughs> Keep it at followed. That's phenomenal. All right, yeah. So you guys are making your way um, towards, like Thomas leads you uh, um, out of the town. Uh, we're gonna change the music here because that's not good. That's not the right time. So we're gonna go back to what I had before. And. Uh, and he um, takes you out of the town and and my fault (laughs) it's about 20 minutes north on foot of the town square proper and he um, he takes you in that direction and he says so we keep our fields out here and um, we're just we're trying our best to, to keep everything else and what was that for those of you, um, who has a passive of above 15? I do not. Weirdo. I don't believe I do, but let me double check that just in case. No. Uh, I do have dark vision, if it's dark. 12. Nah. We are playing a blind party right now. <laughs> Am I the only one who has dark vision? I have dark vision. Okay, thank god. I have dark vision. I do not. No, I don't. I'm... Yeah. Corgis are not known for their ability to see in the dark. Nor are tools. Uh, my frog has dark vision, too. Well, you don't have to worry <laughs> about that too much. Uh, over on the left-hand side of your screen... Is where you guys can go ahead and drag your uh, your tokens. Where, where is my token? I don't know where mine is either. Where am I? Okay, so a really easy way to cheat the system to get a token is just to go to your character bio on your character sheet where it says bio and info. Mm-hmm. Click on the picture that you put there and drag that on no the picture. screen. You don't have a picture. I'll throw some tokens <laughs> out for you. Yeah. Okay. Put a picture in there and then drag it onto the screen. Let's okay. see. Who's a good one? Got some. Oh, no, these are mostly for other people. So I'll go ahead and uh, for written. Do I have a good token? I can get something real fast just using a snipping tool. Here we go. Oh, here we are. Uh, for written, a knight. How's that? And then we have a ranger. And... Oh, I'll just use a gal. I have an actual goblin for... For Shannon. Mm-mm. At the risk of possibly displeasing Barty, if we do cause collateral damage, oh, is pumpkins, go. yes? Could we perhaps buy the damaged pumpkins and turn them into pies or something for our own travels, so as to compensate you for any losses you do incur from magic or otherwise catastrophic events? Oh, yes, I could... Oh, I know a wonderful recipe for a, a pumpkin pie. I could totally do that, as long as I have plenty of cinnamon and nutmeg and all spice. Oh, it would be so good. I'm certain we can acquire, and we, I can 
we can compensate them as well for anything. Oh, yes, no, I would, I'd make enough for everybody. And these, oh, my goodness, you are not lying about, this is about two of me. Wow. Yes, they are good, sizable pumpkins. Honestly, I was expecting bigger. Oh, hush. The this pumpkins a... in front of you, there are some, the, the ones that are, like, on the inside of the, of the entrance to this maze are uh, about eight, eight feet tall, but the ones that are behind them uh, range anywhere from tw- 10, 10 to 15 t- feet tall. I could live in one of these things, <laughs> though I don't know how well that would smell after a while. Hmm. And each Perhaps. one of them... Uh, each and every single one of them. Yeah, that should. You should be able to move your token now, Amber. Um, has a jack o' lantern carved into it. I pull out a torch and light it on the, uh, the candles inside the pumpkin. Well, some of us can't see it in the dark. <laughs> I mean, I. As you know, and uh, Arthur, you know, like snaps his fingers, and uh, uh, a light appears on on the tip of his fingers. Like, light spell is always a good option. Hold on, can I cast Pass Without Trace real quick? You can. Yeah. Um, Thomas is there, and he, he he's like he's worrying I can't. just a little bit. What was that, Art? Amber. That- Shelter. I was saying yes, but I can't bludgeon something with a light spell. <laughs> Why would you bludgeon something with a light? Oh wait, this is one of those adventuring things. Got it. Right. Thomas is sit- standing there just outside the, the maze himself with, with you, and he he's like, I could have sworn I heard a little girl. Did any of you hear it? Who here has a passive perception of fifteen or higher? I do not. No. no. Twelve. You're not very perceptive, motherfuckers. <laughs> no, we're not. That's how we got lost in the first place. That's how actually how we get lost on a lot of our adventures. I'm sure we just got like, I think it's this way, and then we miss the roadside entirely. Yeah, that sounds about right, honestly. Yeah. Although for yeah. the turtle, that's probably a plus rather than a negative, just because of their nature. <laughs> I just yeah. <laughs> Um, yes. Before we go in, uh, Ritten will like to cast Divine Sense. All right, uh, go ahead and cast Divine. You cast Divine Sense, and um, you are you feel from inside this maze something fiendish. Um, Ritten will say, "My friends, I believe there is uh, there is some." some creature in this maze of a perhaps a fiendish nature um we should be oh confident. boy when you hear Am- Amber hears the word fiend she just sort of gets a really grim look and almost like a smile on her face and then <laughs> says let's hunt a fiend upon hearing the word fiend Arthur goes the exact opposite direction he's like <laughs> fiend like 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 like, 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 a, a, a demon? Like, uh, as in, uh, horns and, uh, you know, uh, uh, possibly a devil. Uh, as in sign contract, and you get your soul close. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh um, hmm, hmm. Mm-hmm. Richard will, uh, go, go up to Arthur and maybe pat him in the back of the head and say, Do not worry, little one. I'm sure we can handle anything that can come at us in this maze. And do not worry. I will protect you. Thank you. Bridge him behind my ears. <laughs> if, if Arthur like yes. being scratched on the back of the head, uh, Ritten will give him a little scratch. <laughs> like no, I, you, uh, not, not not in front of people, not in front of other people, please. So Can I may be it? very honest with you. It uh, may be lucky if it is the kind that signs contracts and not some sort of yugoloth that causes my asthma mist to poison entire village out of nowhere. There are many kinds of fiend, and some of them are very nasty, but uh, will at least probably not be clown. 
Yes, everyone knows that killer clowns come from outer space. Yes. One of these days we need to plug up space to go and prevent these incursions of Keith Yankee and the clown. But for now, <laughs> for now we deal with immediate problem. I can't oh, believe my homophobia is acting up right now. <laughs> what was Marshweed saying? I think clowns are kind of cute and little funny creatures, aren't they? No. <laughs> no, no, they're not. They're really, really not. I can tell you, uh, clowns are clowns are, are horrifying people. They, uh, they they juggle and then they smile and sometimes they throw pies at your face constantly all day and it's not fun. That sounds delightful. It's and, not. Uh, <laughs> Marshy uh, will uh, do druid craft to create like a little uh, a clown doll and shoves it in uh, <laughs> Arthur's face. Come on, how do you say no to one of these? If no. Arthur could pale, if his fur could pale, it would, and he is literally, like, this close to just passing out. Alright, um, Are go ahead and, uh, vibrations? go ahead and I tell me... I have tremor sense. You have tremor sense. That's pretty cool, actually. Are there any vibrations, uh, on the... Earth? Ooh. Uh, yes, Are you a picking a good vibrations kind of or thrum going through the Earth. Okay, uh, I can pinpoint the origin of vibrations within a specific radius. Yeah, it's the pumpkins provided. all around you. The pumpkins are vibrating? That's what it feels like. Okay. Uh, go ahead uh, and maybe... roll me uh, initiative. Yay. Uh, if you click your character first and then click the initiative on your character sheet, it will actually auto-generate the list. Mm-mm. Get it? Sort of good. Click your token and then press initiative, and it'll just pop into there, like that. Can't finish. Can I, I? I can't access my token. Uh, that's weird. Hold on, Marshweed. <laughs> Is the initiative it's the red It says circle? that you should be able to control it. I'm the little goblin one, yeah, right? Marshweed. Hold on. I keep seeing uh, the distance indicator pop up. You may need to switch it to the select and move. Yeah, uh, make sure that you're on the yeah. arrow. Oh, okay. Where's the... Alright. And then... Why does it let me... Okay, once you have your token selected, go to the core sheet of your three in the uh, character table, and then under initiative, if you click the word in the middle, it'll roll for uh, you. There it is. With the word. Yeah. Make the word. Bird is the word. Bird. Bird where? Sergei not want to be attacked by giant rock again. <laughs> very disturbing Rizzi. being picked up by angry evil birdie. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, it was quite majestic while you were flying like that. Oh yes, it was very majestic, but also Sergei is not fond of being eaten. <laughs> that is a good point, I Yeah, that is a very good point. Or drop several stories to try to crack. <laughs> Susie, How many uh, times did that happen again? It happened three. Shoreline is terrible. <laughs> what are you What are you all yapping about? We don't want the devil to know what's going on. Oh. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Susie, could you roll initiative for your character? I and did, and I got a one. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I will. I will add your character in. You, are you using like? Are you using your own dice at home? I did. I'm not quite sure how to do the initiatives. Oh yeah, what you're gonna do is you're gonna like click on your character, go over to your character sheet, open it up, and up in the corner when you have character sheet, it's gonna have uh, yep. where it says initiative. Just click on the word initiative. Oh. Well. I did do a physical roll, so you can take that one. No, I'll or keep the, the one that that's on that because that one I got, that one I saw. 
as it was. Same. All right, so we're going to do this. We're going to do from descending. Amber is up front and first in line. That makes sense. Amber, which way would you like to look and uh, go on? Um, I'll look to the north, uh, see if there's anything up that way. All right, so you look to the north. Bunch of pumpkins. All right, and I'm going to head this way. See if there's anything around the corner. And a little bit further, you can see. I look back. I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't quite remember the ranger's name at the moment. Oh, it's Van. Uh, I look back at Van and say, "The mace forks in two directions." Both seem to go on for some way. Which way should we go? Um, the vibrations were coming from all over the place. All of the pumpkins felt like they were vibrating. That is unusual. Pumpkins that is concerning. Vibrate. All right. Also, don't move your tokens around until it's your turn. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll move mine back. I'll move mine back. Alright, okay. um, I am going to use my action to investigate this nearest jack-o'-lantern. Alright, you are investigating that uh, jack-o'-lantern. Go ahead and roll it, and I'll tell you what you get. A 12! You're looking at the jack-o'-lantern, and there's... You're looking at it, it's... Uh, it's got really thick flesh. The outer part is nice and shiny. The flame inside uh, is changing colors. It goes from um, red to orange to yellow to green to purple. The ch- you notice now that like a lot of the, the colors, which had been stable but a few minutes ago, just moments ago, really, they're now changing colors as you uh, look at them. So there's something magical about these. Um, Amber, what's your I, passive? My passive? Mm-hmm. 11. 11. All right. Um, I uh, open my uh, water skin and uh, try and douse this flame. All right, you open your water skin and you douse the flame with your water. It sizzles, it sputters, but it does not go out. Vaughn, what is your um, what is your passive? Um, it's thirteen. Oh, good. You hear a giggle. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, uh, guys, I heard a giggle. It's not good. I, oh, okay, I I don't hear I'd anything. That, I'd say that probably oh. counts as all my actions. Yet yeah, does count as all your actions, but not all your movement. Do you no. want to move further down or north? Or do you want to stay put? You've used about ten feet. I will I will stay put for now until I figure out what the rest of the party's gonna do. Alright, fair enough. Vaughn. What will you do? Um question. I am going to roll um, shit, I don't know. Arcana? Arcana, go for it, yeah. Uh, Ten Arcana. Shit. <laughs> okay, well, let me tell you. You take a look at the pump at the jack o' lanterns that are lining this way. They're each big. Uh, you can like easily. Uh, you could in fact step into these pumpkins uh you wouldn't want to there's a big old flame in the middle uh it's with a with a big old candle it's wax uh like very stuck to the bottom and that flame is big the flame is actually really big much bigger than it should be and it fills up the entire that this magical flame because it is magic you know this is changing colors okay. and um it smells it smells vaguely of nutmeg like pumpkin spot and pie spices. Um, that's all you um, know about it. <laughs> guys, I think they were telling us something. Somebody. Um, uh, guys, still here? 
We the bell? May Thomas not is outside. Have asked the quite main enough questions about the spirits they were celebrating, but I don't know if these are necessarily <laughs> malevolent. They are moving and they are giggling, uh-huh. but uh, they may not be, uh, how do you say, monster? They may be the happy spirits that villagers were after. So he does not know either way. I am going to hold my action as well. You're going to hold your Sorry. action? Can you stay there? All yeah. right. Um, fantastic. Sergey, what are you going to do? Sergey is going to try to provoke actions from anything that might be hostile by going up the north path a little bit. All right, go for it. Make your movement. Figure out a path without trace that way. Whoa, what's your mo- what's your movement? <laughs> I am a monk. <laughs> oh, that's right, you got like 45 movement. Oh, wow, I keep forgetting. Monks are fast. Monk, yeah, you go fast. all the way up there. Uh, what's your passive perception, by the way? My passive is a 12. A 12. Fantastic. You, um... You hear at, from amongst the pumpkins around you. By the way, I should reveal this area to you. Um, from amongst the pumpkins around you, you hear a voice as though you were a, a tiny girl say, Why don't you come and play with me? Yikes. Play with us forever and ever. <laughs> what game would little one like to play a giggle is all you hear in response I believe... or a giggle? giggle so Sergei is hearing small child Thomas mentioned maybe lost in her or what Sergei thinks is small child anyway as very good vocal range Sergei cannot see anything but uh Wants to play very giggly. Can I maybe do something I forgot? Um, what did you forget? About my frog. He could jump, um, up to 20. Its high jump is 10 feet in the air. He'd jump and. I'll let you retroactively on that. Yeah, go for it. (laughs) Alright. Yeah, he just jumps and, um, alerts us if he sees anything. All right. Uh, can you make a perception check for your frog? Um, what is my frog? It's, uh, it's I think it's just a straight. No, plus two. Okay. So, e twenty plus two. No, stop. Ding. Okay. Uh, that's not bad. But your frog comes back down. Doesn't appear to have seen anything unusual. Okay. All right. That's it. All right, uh, Sergey. No actions on your part. You're done with your your turn. <laughs> then. Big bug. Are you done with your turn? I see nothing to smash, hit, or otherwise. So, other than using his racial ability to hold his breath for up to an hour, just in case of poison mists or anything. Okay. Sergei will end his turn. Written, what will you do? Uh, Written will move forward. The the retainers behind her will be, my lady, we cannot condone this. This is folly. And please, let, let, let us indulge in this. This could be nothing, and we could do a great service to ease the minds of the tr- of the townspeople and the retainers. Thomas well, pops all right, up from right. behind. And he's like, yeah, no, that would really, really, like, just... We'd like to use the pumpkin maze we made. Written gestures I... to the very grateful townsfolk. <coughs> you see, Bless you. my friends, let us let us continue. Perhaps it will be nothing. If it is not, we will leave it alone. But let us continue. And then the retainers are very oh, huh? Oh, 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 all right. Um, and they proceed forward. Uh, written will go um, as far as she can go. Um. Up, uh, are each of the squares five feet? Yeah. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, and that's, I think, as far as she can go. She'll go right up to Amber. And, uh... She will... We know that they're rumbling. She's just... She's gonna say, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta poke the bear and she will unsheath her sun blade, which... Um, materializes into a radiant blade of light and she attacks the pumpkin. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, make an attack roll for me. Okay. Uh, Sometimes you just gotta poke something with a sword and see what happens. That is definitely what she does. Getting, he's still getting Does anyone stuff. smell burning pumpkin? <laughs> I don't know, but I can hear smashing pumpkin. I could have <laughs> missed it. Yeah, you beat me to it. Ah, fastest punter in the West. Do it? Sorry, I'm not used to it's roll okay. 20. You can also type into the uh, the chat bar. Mm-hmm. You can do slash can do roll. However, many natural you one. Fuck. <laughs> so um, you can you can maybe do you're that. so so enamored with. Uh, I am. The pumpkin is Amber like... distracting me, and the light is just getting in my eyes, and I completely missed the pumpkin. So you can like slash roll it, and it'll show a thing. Okay. Um. So you you natural one. Okay, that's yeah. fun. Um, Getting that out of the way. Yeah, you just slash at the pumpkin, completely miss it. You're not used to really wielding your sunblade yet. What if she slashes at the pumpkin, but because it's a nat one, the sword just doesn't turn on? Like she didn't click the button right <laughs> in the lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's exactly what I put happening. Oh, that's it's fantastic. Like, uh, any other like actions? Rod sword not materializing. Um. Uh, she will look very embarrassed and, um, put the sword away again. Just like, I don't, don't do that. Don't worry, it happens to the best of us. You'll get them next time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, what happened? I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about, small well, dog. We're all, we're right. we're all creeped Nothing out. has happened. I got it. What were you hey, saying, Chelta? Do, do you have extra attacks since we're level five? I, as a multi-class, do not. My single hits are pretty solid, but oh, I don't wait. have two. You have another attack. I think I do have another attack, actually. As a paladin, I think I have two attacks at level five. Yeah, I think I think at five, uh, most of the fighter paladin, uh, more martial classes do get a second attack. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I will attack the pumpkin again after what did, definitely didn't just happen. Um... <laughs> All right, and feel free to use the dice roller that's in that's in the app. Ooh, is that the? B? If you go on the left hand side, there's a little D twenty. Mm-hmm. And if you hover over it, it'll give you all the dice options that you have, and mm-hmm. or you can just click on it, and it will show the dice roller. Just pop it up right in front of you, and you can choose which one you want to do. Ooh. Very handy. Like it. Um, oh, this is a great system. <laughs> I'll do that next time because I feel like I already rolled and I feel like I shouldn't not do it. But I rolled a um seventeen. Seventeen, fantastic. Okay, yeah, yeah. You definitely your your light your sunblade sinks into and just shears off a side of this pumpkin. Just like you just take off a good four foot chunk of this pumpkin. Take that. And nothing happens? Uh, well, I mean, the pumpkin is now open. Is there anything more that we can see now that we kind of have a better view of the pumpkin? Um, specifically no. of the fire? You you guys can see the fire pretty well because it's the big old mouth. Um, but no, there's nothing new that you can see. I think that's all my actions. But I, I will ponder its open pumpkin. Marsh. I eat <laughs> You eat the pumpkin? <laughs> I think I'll take like a 
just to see. Okay, it's raw pumpkin. Um, the inside is kind of leathery. The retainers around me are like, my lady, my lady, you do, what, what, what? And I'm just like, it is rather leathery, letting you know. We, we would have eaten it for you. That is not necessary. I'm eating my slain pumpkin. <laughs> All right, March All lead. hail the mighty slayer of the pumpkins. What are you doing? I look at her and I'm like, are they always like this? They might um, be. Uh, Marshweed is going to uh, follow up towards uh, uh, Sergei because she doesn't want to leave him alone. Um, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right there. And he's going to ca- uh, cast uh, Detect Magic. Um so she can, you know, get a, a sense of um, where this magic is coming from, and see if all the uh, uh, pumpkins are magical with flames and stuff. There we go. Yes. Uh, Detect magic. Yes, you, like, the pumpkins that are immediately around you are all giving off uh, quite a lot of magic. Uh, enchantments and evocation magic and, uh, there's a little bit of abjuration magic in there as well. Huh. All right, guys. Uh, pretty much all the pumpkins are, are magical right now. Um, <laughs> so that was a lot of work. Whoever did this, good for them. Do you suppose was the work of fiends deeper within? But well, then... Why- all right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And as well as action, cast sh- Shillelagh. All right. You've cast Shillelagh. Your 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 staff gets some like that that green sheen around it. Gives off a little bit of light. Right now, before Arthur goes, uh, we have some fun what? things. I need everybody to make deck mm-hmm. saves. Is it magic based? No. Okay. What's the perception check for? I'm great at deck save. Sorry. You say that, but I'm reflecting on how I am the worst monk in the world. (laughs) All right. I do that one? Okay, sorry. I did did dex. I did dex the wrong dex. Yeah! I saw. All right. Well, we'll start with... um, We'll start (gasps) with... We'll start with Marshweed. Marshweed, you're looking around and you have your detect magic out and it gives you a little bit of an advantage here because now uh, you notice that there's something magical is heading your way and you look down and you see one of the vines from the pumpkins has reached out towards you and tries to wrap around your around your foot. And you oh, nimbly no. dodge out of the way. <laughs> rope, 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 rope. What? Arthur, I, I can't. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What are you saying? Rope, 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 rope. Arthur, you look down. You're, you're like you look down <laughs> yourself, and then there's one of those those t- tangling uh, vines. It's trying. It's snatching towards you, and you barely manage to get your little paw out of its out of its grasp before it gr- grips you. Amber, likewise. The <clears throat> you're not really thinking, but you hear you hear um, Marshweed cry out and look down. De- and, and uh, attuned to your your senses, and this this vine comes out to trying to grab your arm, and you dodge out of the way. However, written is not quite so uh, so um, lucky, and is where's my fun restrained, held to the spot. Where they are, they'll get it. You'll get on your turn. You'll get a chance to escape using a strength using a strength check. Likewise, um, Sergey, you are not really looking down, uh, so you don't try to move when the vines wrap around your legs and hold you down. Uh, can you? Let's see how how to be loud. Li- like, what would be loud to be loud? Uh, give me a charisma check to see if um, Thomas can hear you from that deep in the, the maze. 
prison is my dump stat. That's enough. I'm not even going to make you make it that difficult. You sh shout, and you hear very faintly from the back, he's like, What's a Necromomicon? <laughs> not knowing. Ambergy. So, Sergey, you are done, and Vaughn, um, like, you see vines hey. starting to, fl like, flail all over the place, so you start dancing, um, and I'm not going to make your, your, your frog is hoppy, so... Yeah. Is this considered a forest, by so the way? So he's an IPA. I don't know. Is Rib an IPA? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what Rib is, but is this a forest? It is not considered a forest. Okay, never mind. Okay, that's cool. Rib is, Rib is riding me now, instead of me riding Rib. Alright. Um, Arthur, it is he is in I go, right! A-O-U-S. Okay, we are in a lot of danger right now, as he says as he nimbly tries to duck and weave. Are we? Sergei hadn't noticed. Oh, what their vines are. Uh, Arthur walks up to uh, this person right here. I forget who, who meant it. Written. That's, uh, um... And... And what he will do is, as a bonus action to Sergey, he looks at you and it's like, come on, we need to get out right now, and you now have Bardic Inspiration. Uh, what Bardic Inspiration does I th is, on your next check you make, you can choose to roll an additional D8 to whatever uh, your roll would be. You can roll this after your roll, but before you know the uh, outcome of it. It's a really nice little thing uh, Bards can do. Uh, and to um, uh, written uh, writ uh, terrible mm -hmm. names uh, to that to the person uh, right in front of me written uh, written thank you I am I am You're good. terrible with names he will uh, give aid on the uh, on his turn when he tries to get out all right written has uh, advantage on their next on their strength check nothing else. Uh, I'll move behind the nice, big, uh, strong Amazonian fighter. <laughs> Alright, Amber, before you do anything, you hear a voice, uh, origin, like, originating from this direction. And it, it says, come this way, play with me. Um... Okay, first, can I see which pumpkin the vine um, that has grabbed written has come from? Uh, it's coming from in this area. It could be from any any of these pumpkins here. Okay, in that case, I am going to move by here and just try and cut at the vine itself as I pass. Uh, okay, um, so you're going to make an, an attack as you as you go that direction. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Make a regular great sword attack. Yeah. Yep. You cut right oh. through the vine. Um, and <laughs> I uh, see how many how many feet was that? I was here. So you were here five, ten, fifteen, twenty. No, I haven't moved. I was here. Yeah. So well, well, actually, I'm... diagonally, it's like five, ten. Five, ten. 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I move up to where um the turtle is, and I'm like, Sergey, what's happened? Are you entangled too? Apparently. It's <clears throat> terribly painful or anything. It is just vines appeared on restricted legs. Sergey, not entirely sure how it happened. Alright, well, uh, I'm going to, I guess, just use my ex my other attack and hit the nearest pumpkin. I'll play the corner one. Alright. Oh, sir, have you been hearing Smoke Child? Apparently wants to play very badly. 
Oh, of course. <laughs> oh no. I give it and the dice got to take it away. Oh, uh, it's alright. You still hit. <laughs> Roll damage. Stats are so high. You still right, yeah, you just them. like cleave the pumpkin clean in half, uh, and like I part of it tell, falls right? down. You know that was a one. Yeah, that sucks. So I probably shouldn't have killed the Yeah, but I'm looking at the numerical outcome. Oh, fair enough. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I just up there and I'm like uh, if you want to play devil show yourself <laughs> alright Vaughn what will you do so what is the plan are we getting out of here or are we trying to go deeper into it quick consensus anybody I'd say no. let's do it let's go we it sounds like whatever is helping us is everywhere we might as well go deeper. Yeah, we need to destroy okay. this before it can fester and spread. We have to go deeper. We should uh, probably decide which direction we're going to go. Yeah, yeah. splitting the party. Yeah, let's not split the party. Uh, so, uh, like on north? Jason, which way did you say the voice was coming from? The voice was coming from, uh, from the direction that y'all are already headed, for the most part. From the north? Like, yes. From where Sergei is. Hmm? Okay. Uh, okay. I think I'm going to move 30 feet uh, right up here somewhere. And I'm going to also. I'm going to try to create bonfire. No. No, 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 no. So uh, always burn your own party with the bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a do five not, foot radius. <laughs> do not cook your friends. Friends do not like being cooked. Friends are friends, not food. I think since the attacks aren't doing anything to the pumpkins, I'm still gonna hold my hold an action. Uh, if something comes out, if a devil comes out. Uh, okay. Yeah. The attacks aren't doing anything, right? Yeah, go ahead. Give me. Do not make. Give me a. Uh, give me an insight check. Okay. Uh. That's actually pretty good. Uh, you have you have an, um, a niggle, niggling little thought in the back of your head here. These pumpkins aren't moving. They're magical, obviously. Yes, and something and something's attacking, but something's. Just, calling for you to go deeper into the um into the maze so something in the maze is controlling all the pumpkins okay uh, they're not uh attached to each other they're not one entity do i know that you don't believe they're one entity but rather they're okay. operating on of, off of some rudimentary magic yeah then i'm gonna hold a reaction in case something pops out all right, Sergey. Then oh, what will you do? Having noticed, thanks to Amber, that he is probably under assault and has not simply tripped up in these things, Sergey is going to try to flex the bomb. Okie doke. Let's see. Should I take rage first for the advantage? Or should I save it? Uh, I'll save it. I'll just do a normal straight save. So that's a twenty. You handily rip off the um, the vine. They're not very strong. Uh, they're only they appear to be just strong enough to hold you in place for a little bit. Huh. Very odd things these vines. Are the pumpkins hostile? I don't feel like pumpkins are hostile. Normally, but also right now. <laughs> uh, well, pumpkins. so they search further. Go on, uh, Michael. Pumpkins so aren't usually anything other than delicious when baked into pies or used <laughs> in some casserole. 
Or soup. Or soup. I forgot about... You can never forget about soup. Thank you. I prefer to forget about soup. What is your hatred with soup? <laughs> I promise you, the last time I made it, I didn't think you'd get food poisoning. Ow. Written, that what would you do? to do with it. Um... Uh, Ritten will be struggling against the vines. The, the retainers are coming over. They're fussing over her. She's like, ah! And then with the help of, of dear Arthur is going to make... Oh, no, you're free. Amber cut you oh, free of the vine. I'm good. Remember that? Yeah, I cut you free. Oh, that's right. Perfect. Um, Ritten will look down at Arthur and say, dear one, would you like a ride? Yes, please. <laughs> he goes <laughs> like this for you to pick him up. Fix him oh, up. That's adorable. Um, you he can go on the, like you can the back. Um, you can, like, ride on my shield. Um, oh, he's going full piggyback. Okay. Sounds good. Follow um, your friends, you must. Question. That is the opposite here, did you think? Yes. Um, and I will make a sprint... Across that is true. You guys have the, the dash option. Um, yeah. Two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, just follow the rest along this trail up north. Uh, if you want to, yeah. if you want to dash as your action, you can take your movement twice. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that then, uh, if if it's possible with. A corgi on my back. It is. The corgi is very light. I am a small creature. <laughs> and you go with me. Um, and if it is at all possible, I might kick some vines to entrap my retainers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're trying to get rid of them because it's like, I've had enough of you, bye! Well, they'll have to catch up to you on, on their turn, and I'm going to... I'll run them at the at the same time I run the pumpkins. I mean, my frog can grapple them. Through our travels, you've gotten the feeling that Written is very not is very eager to be rid of these uh, retainers. You were like, <laughs> "I'm going on an adventure," and your and, and your retainers like, "We're going on an adventure." <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? What were you saying, Chaltab? I was saying, if I see the retainers into the maze, I turn and yell at them to get out of here before you get yourselves killed. Uh, roll an intimidation check. That's right. There is usually that rule that they won't endanger mm. their own lives, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Um, that is sufficiently enough. They, like, they, they followed written in, but they were, like, very frightened, and that was enough to, uh, get them. They ran, they immediately, uh, turned to run out of the maze. A uh, written will look back and say, are they, are they gone? Are they gone? Um, and upon like, like, oh, thank God, I was so, I was so eager to get rid of those guys. Thank you guys <laughs> so much. Oh, my God. You I am so sick of those guys. Marshy. Holy shit! All right, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going doing this thing. No Uh, so Marshweet is gonna go uh, her full thirty feet to keep up with everyone. One, two, three, five, six, and then she kind of wants to um, examine like the root systems. The roots have uh, kind of popped up around them, and see if she can like use those to guide her. Uh, guide the party where um, they're being controlled from, the point of where they're being controlled. Oh, hmm. Give me an insight check. Insight? Yes, and I'm going to give this to you as a free action. Survival? Uh, sure, you can use survival. Alright, here we go. Alright, you know for a fact that um, these vines aren't reaching to any, these roots aren't going anywhere specific. Um, each one holds down, like, the vines holding up to the pumpkins, the, pu- the jack-o'-lanterns and everything, but, like, them specifically, in... there's nothing, like, they're not reaching for anywhere. Oh, rats. 
All right. Uh, but that's There's... a free action, so like, what what else would you would you like to do? Oh, that's a free action. Yes. Um. All right. Then I think what I will do. Uh, there's really nothing I can do at this moment. So do you I'm want to dash? Gonna, um, no, I, I'm going to, well, yeah, I'll dash and get right behind our portal friend here. So 15 feet. Okay. Uh, instead come of the on, vines. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? I'm just saying, come on, guys. Keep up. <laughs> Instead of vines, the flames and the pumpkins begin to glow brighter and brighter. Give me deck saves, everyone. Oh, shit. And this is not okay. a spell effect either. This one is. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask is because one of my items gives me advantage on all spell saves. I know. Sorry, what save was that? <laughs> a save. deck save. <laughs> Oh no! Oh shit! I have a plus seven. We are just not having it. This is. This Thank is God amazing. for advantage. Thank God for advantage. I'm so I'm Hold so. On. It's it's not, it's not. Um, <laughs> uh, they're not trying to. The charm me or put me to sleep, right? Spit out fire at you. And for each one of you who um failed your save, you're going to go ahead and take six points of damage. Okay. Okay. Who, who fails their save? Uh, that would be Sergey and Charlie. <laughs> and they're the only ones who failed their saves. We just change the token so to reflect that right fast. And it is now Arthur's turn. Arthur is standing on top of uh, the the strong paladin, right? Written the paladin. Mm-hmm. Wait, he has ridden her to victory, is what he's done. Um, t- <laughs> uh, he's looking around. He sees he's seeing fire. These things shooting fire. He's like, well, this has gotten very interesting. Uh, and he is like. If somebody wants to play, let's not keep them waiting. I think they're very angry at us for being so tarty. He uh, will gr- uh, gladly hop off the paladin uh, right there, and then he will uh, move. Let's see. He moves there, and then he dashes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you display it out, he will move that last five feet. Okay. Let me see here if I can. All right. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty. All right. So that's. Oh, that is. Why does it do that? All right, um, give me a perception check. Uh, one second. So you're near enough where you might be able to see through. Okay, yeah, that is enough. You, you can't see very well, but you can see that there's some sort of chest in this direction. Arthur will look around. He's kind of panicked. He moves his last five feet and he goes, Huh. Is there supposed to be a chest in here? I mean, uh, you hear nothing. I mean, what? No response anyways. <clears throat> but he, he's trying to say this to his, his group. Uh, define the chest. Is it the chest that holds things, or the chest for babies, or what What sort of chest are we referring to? Uh, item chest, like uh, what we found all that gold in that one time. Oh, yes. 
probably not. Probably not meant to be in maze unless his prize for kiddies for solving or something. I am both terrified and intrigued. <laughs> I have no other actions I can take. All right. Amber. I'm going to uh, use my action to dash. Two, three, four, five. Um, and uh, look around. Uh, you guys make a perception check. If you're trying to spot the chest, he will point. Uh, Arthur will have be pointing now, at it. I'm not trying to spot the chest. I'm trying to spot anything that might be trying to murder us. You see pumpkins. Well, Looks like there's a big space over uh, to the right. And down. You see something. Um, you're not I, sure what. I <laughs> Because it's hidden behind... It's the same color as the pumpkins, but there's something different about it. And it's um, just in front of of the chest. It would be it would be here, but I don't have a thing for it here right now. Okay, um, I point that thing out to uh, um, wow, Arthur. I'm mine kind of blanked on your name for a second, and uh, I believe that will end my turn. All right, Vaughn, what are you doing? Um, I am going to. Use my movement. Let's see. No. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to move here. And you said there's something in front of the chest? Yeah. So like here? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to create bonfire. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I have this in correctly. Let's see. It's a DC 3, uh, 13 dexterity save. Uh, 13, yeah. Okay. So that should be 2d8. Okay. That's a really and good roll. Fail. Um, all right. So you hear a hiss, and uh, there's that didn't sound good. something awful <laughs> sounding um, just shriveling up. And it's coming from this direction. Okay. It, okay. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's all I can do. All right, oh. Sergey. Sergey, thank you for fire, my good friend Ben. Now I can see the horrible thing screaming at us. I mean, you're Slightly. surrounded by f- flames. Also, Sergey is on fire, and Sergey is not fond of this. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, create no, bonfire is just, uh, yeah, it's just a nah, uh, I put fire damage last time. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah, so ten, did I. Ten, 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 ten would get me there. And then... I would like to use. It smells like roast turtle. Step of the wind. <laughs> I will spend a key point to go and use a dash as a bonus action. Monk's ultimate maneuverability. Do 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 do. 15, 25, 30, 40. So I will wind up right in front of this chest. All right, do you open it? Um, by the way, right in front of the chest is this uh, is another pumpkin. Uh, but it's like several pumpkins have been fused together into a childlike body. Cassandra makes a dismayed noise. Sergey stares at it. It's it's sizzling. It's currently on fire. 
Sergey and Cassandra <laughs> think <laughs> that maybe the child was a horrible pumpkin abomination that Sergey will now throw you from around the pumpkins so that you may inspect yourself. If you throw it at Arthur, he screams. He'll throw it and try to lob it at Amber's feet. Alright, uh, give me a uh, strength. Athletics check. Yeah, no, it goes, like, you toss it, it goes all the way up, lands basically at Amber's feet. And just, uh, it like, it acts like a pumpkin in physics. It just splatters on the ground. Oh. Sergey uh, maybe not think examination plan through entirely. If Sergey is still permitted to make attempt to open chest as action, he will do so. Go for it. Yeah, you do. You open the chest. It's not locked. Uh, you open it up, and it's the inside is set in tiers, and on each tier there are masks. There are eight masks in total. They're different face. They're like different Halloween kind of masks. You know, one's like a one's like a fox, one's like a wolf, one's like a monster, one's a vampire, that sort of thing. So, uh, and there's a uh, sign that says, "Take one." There is sign that says, "Take one," and chest is full of masks, Mister Arthur. I am not sure what some of these creatures are, but I am most curious. That is absolutely fascinating. If we weren't being set upon by mad pumpkins that are spitting fire at us. Sergey, take your point, but I'm just saying maybe they have use for solving pumpkin problem somehow. Sergey is not sure if these are magic or not. Can you say what they are again? Is a wolf a vampire? Uh, Yeah. Uh, let me see what my notes say. Yeah, a wolf, a vampire, a fox, a um, like kind of like a Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster rather. A okay. oops, what else do I have here? Oh, and uh, then there's like an owl mask. Um, there is a like ghoulish mask, and then that's that's. Seven, and there's That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's a. And there's a horse mask, and uh, one's like a mummy. Okay. <clears throat> Did anybody, by any chance, uh, count how many people were in the barn? What? In the festival thing? I did not. I didn't even see a barn at the festival. Sergey, do you yeah, play it was... the masks? Sergey, being completely and utterly unsure of what this Frankenstein thing is, will pick it up and examine it and tentatively put it upside down on his own face. Alright, um, yeah, you, um... He immediately transforming Frankenstein. Well, sort of. Um, you put it on, you, you instantly know that you can make yourself look however you want, as long as you look scary. Okay. I feel like mask may be magic after all. I feel like maybe I could look like something else, so long as it is some manner of scary thing? Yes. These are uh, masks of disguise. The one stipulation is that you must be something scary, but in return, you get an advantage on intimidation checks. Right here. Uh, Sergey will not actually use the mask he is wearing. He will instead end his turn there, but good to know. Written, it is your turn. Spaces between the pumpkin? Um, a little bit. There are some spaces there, yeah. Uh, it'll, you know, I'll need a athletics or acrobatics check, and it'll cost you an extra five feet of movement. Just gonna try to go through in between the pumpkins. Okie doke. Do you fall? Do you fall? Do you fall? 
<laughs> so I guess didn't he didn't hear that athletics was it up? <laughs> <laughs> the barbarian's like, wait, I could have muscled my way through. Hey, there's could... only one row of pumpkins. Uh, yeah, I was just waiting for one of you to ask it. <laughs> Is enough. Um, I'm gonna try to go between these two. Got it. So, like, right here. Go for it. You're there. Uh, and you've no used way. an extra five feet. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Alright, yeah. Um, and for my extra five, I'm gonna go here and say, Hey, you! Toss me a mask! Okay. Sergei will toss you a mask gladly. As long as free action. You know what? Sure. This was like, we've gone a little bit longer in the maze than I thought we would. So yeah, you can, <laughs> you can go ahead and just give me a uh, athletics check to toss a mask. Okay. That is the first athletics he's almost failed. That is enough. You toss the mask over, it kind of bonks written on the head. Sergei is sorry, he is distracted because he put mask on upside down and eye holes are by cheeks. <laughs> hey man, you're fine. Anything else written? I'm gonna put on the mask, if that's a free action. That is fine. Uh, that's it then? For your turn? So yeah. Is that your turn? Yes, correct. All right, Marshweed, you're up. Um, all right, so seeing that, oh, we can cheat? And <laughs> she's going to, um... You do not have to use uh, an extra five feet of movement because you are small. Yes, okay. Then what she's going to do is she gives it first go, uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, um, here. And then it's like, oh, give me one of those. All right, you pick up a mask. All right. Um, and then it's like, well, all right. So, um, and then I guess she went 15 feet, right? Um, so she's going to try to get go go through these pumpkins here. Yeah, that's the, there? Yeah. Oh, no, you can't. There's more I pumpkins can't. behind it. There were more pumpkins behind it? All right. Um, uh... Okay. Um, <laughs> then she's gonna cheat and go uh, again and go. Uh, I went twenty, right? Twenty-five, thirty. Did getting a mask counts an action. Uh, it, it's a free action because it was right. loot that you were meant to like find. All right. Then she's gonna go another thirty feet. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. All right. Check out this really cool map! <laughs> uh, and before we get to Arthur... Pumpkin guy. Oh, so, God. <laughs> so, two massive pumpkin oh, golems come out of, uh, come out of this space area here. Um... And I'll reveal that area as well. And um, you all hear uh, a child's voice. <laughs> Come play with my toys. These are not toys. Uh, um, everyone make deck saves. My favorite. I know. I'm gonna ask this pass, again: pass. spell or no? Yeah, uh, it is not. Right. Pass, pass. Pass. Aye, aye, aye. Pass. I think that's everyone, yeah. No, you guys did a great job. The vines, again, try to grab you and restrain you, but you are all wise to that now. So you are, you, you man, managed to avoid them. Marshweed, what is your AC? Uh, 14. 14. Fantastic. Does so. Um, one of these pumpkins uh, takes out, um, like, takes a pumpkin off of their body, and then another one just appears where it was and sp 
spikes it directly down onto you. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take... Four points of damage. Ouch. Oh no, more sweet, are you okay? Arthur, what's your AC? Fourteen. Fourteen. Again, <laughs> that's good enough. This uh pumpkin this pumpkin golem right here decides to go up and try and punt you. Um I need you to give me an athletics or acrobatics check. Acrobatics oh. it is. All right, that is just enough. You um, you get hit. You're gonna go ahead and take. Uh, <coughs> where's my dice? There it is. You're gonna go ahead and take da, 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 four. another four points of damage, but you do not get knocked back. It is now your turn. Tid, having been punted, he looks at this thing that has uh, attacked him. And he whispers under his breath, You fucking son of a bitch. And he casts dissonant <laughs> whispers. Arthur doesn't usually swear, but that's, that's his dissonant whispers. <laughs> it's, a it's a wisdom save, right? Uh, let me, I think, I think it is. One second. I say, Arthur, I'll cover your retreat. And move my sword. Uh, let's see. It is a, yes, yeah, so a wisdom save, uh, it is 3d6 damage, psychic damage, and the target must flee. Half uh, on a, a successful save. Uh, wait, is the creature deaf? Can it hear? Uh, it cannot hear. Okay, then it has no effect, because that's one of the stipulations the creature yeah, has um, to be able I won't hear. let you, you... You cannot use it, because uh, quick looking at it, it does not have ears. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, he does not say that. He just grumbles at it and growls a little at it before catching himself. And is this thing humanoid? It is humanoid. It's just made of pumpkins. Okay, so Crown of Madness will take effect. Oh. It has to, and again, it is a wisdom saving throw, DC 15. DC 15. Okay, uh, does a, so it does not make it save. What, what happens? Uh... Arthur looks at it, he, he uh, ju- does a gesture and speaks arcane uh, words unknown to most people. And a crown of, uh, a thorned crown appears around the creature's head before the spikes dig into its skull. Ouch. And he looks at it and he goes, why don't you go help your friend out over there? And by help, he means attack. Right. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Crown of Madness is essentially a possession of an enemy. It's yeah. really neat if you get a sorcerer and you twin it, so you can get two of the enemies for you at the same time. Oh yeah, it's it's it can be just devastating. And I will mark my turn, Arthur. Uh, since this creature is now non-hostile to Arthur, he will take this opportunity to one, two, back up to here. All right, and that means it's Amber's turn. Don't attack the one with the crown. Uh, it is our friend for now. Okay, um, I am going to skirt around this one. I don't know if that provokes opportunity attack. No. Okay, um, and I'm going to, uh, lay into the one that attacked, uh, that attacked, uh, wow, Marshweed, right, uh, with my booming blade. Boomin Blade. That's fantastic. Uh, 11? I don't think that hit. That does not hit, I'm afraid. Uh, your Booming Blade just, like, slams up and just, like, kind of dissipates against its uh, thick rind. Rind? Whatever. <laughs> husk? It's All Gordy right, Husk. Um, Gordy Husk. Alright. So oh, Gord, no. I... Wow, really? Uh, I'm going to... Uh, you could say I just turn. squashed your ambitions? You're going to end your turn? You stop. Yes. Uh, I don't want to burn my action for yet. Well, you do have another attack because you're level... Or are you multi-class? 
No, I use booming blade. I I don't get an extra attack. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's one of the weird stipulations. Yeah. It's not okay. Good. All right. Um, Vaughn. Okay, I think I do have two attacks. Um, I believe. But I'm going to use my movement and go 30 feet this, or 25 feet right there. Um, okay. Bonus action, Hunter's Mark. Let's see. I think I added that. On this fellow right here? Um, on... Wait, which one did you click? Uh, this the one. one. The right. this, is, this is the one without the... Um, the one without the crown. Arthur didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. bonus action, Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to attack with my longbow, which I have proficiency in. That is... And because of Hunter's Mark, you should get advantage. Uh, yes, I believe I do. Nice. Um, just creature. Whenever you have uh, advantage on any, yeah. Or no, no, sorry. I deal uh, an extra d one d six. Ah. Okay. Yeah, my bad. Um, so I have. E. How do I do this in this? Rolling my weapon. What you can do is go uh, backslash roll. Uh, however, okay. like the how x d twenty d twenty or pl plus whatever your other number is. Uh, wait, backslash roll. E. Sorry, guys. I don't use roll 20. <laughs> it's okay. I figured that might happen one, one time. So if you do... So if you do... To do... If you do... No, just do that. Roll. Slash roll. Uh, I just do... 20 plus 2. If you do that, okay. it'll come out to... That. It will... Okay. Okay. Can I just use that number? Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Okay, so that's my attack roll. Uh, 15 does that hit. hit. Yes. Okay, cool. So, that is with my longbow, which is... Uh, 1d8 plus 4. Want me to roll that? You can just roll a d8 and then add, we'll add four, plus 4 to that. Wow, okay. nice! I am back. Plus Hunter's Mark, so that's another plus five, so that thing just got uh, another, bored. I think that's a, a, another D6. Okay, yes. uh, right? <laughs> How dare I not? Look at uh, yeah, extra, 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 one D6 one damage D6. to target whenever you hit okay. it with a weapon attack. Yes. Hello. All right, there you so, go. like, yes. <laughs> Eight plus four is twelve, so another and plus another six, so that's eighteen. Uh, you have done a lot of damage. Your arrow has like just sheared off a huge chunk of its torso. Oh. It's not looking pretty, Sergey. Okay, and unless uh, um, what yeah. else you have to go to do? Um, you could go ahead. I don't know my character as well as I should, so go ahead, Sergey. Let's see. I am on the wrong side of the pumpkins to do much of the fighting here. An athletics check, and you can go through. Your movement. May I do the athletics to try to squeeze through as part of my movement, then? Yes. It's an extra five points of movement and an athletics check. Okay. That so... Is, that succeeds. I will burst through... I will watch the map freak out as I try to move Sergey for some reason. <laughs> no, seriously, does Sergey say, oh yeah? Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> Whoa, wow, um, all over the place. But he's right in there. Alright. You gonna rage? Yes. Sergei would like to rage. Fantastic! Pumpkin <laughs> gold. This was all going to be fun and games, but then you hurt Marsh with an Arthur. Now you'll be smash. And then he's going to take a raging warhammer to it. No, he be warhammer. squash. Why don't you? Does a twenty that hit? That twenty it. does, in fact, hit. So that will be eight bludgeoning for that. And then, as a monk, he will do his usual unarmed flea bit. Arthur, I swear to hell that if you keep that out, I will punch you. Welcome to how I play Arthur. 19 hit. Do, do, do. Martial are you, arts are great. Are your unarmed strikes considered magical at level 5? Or is that level 10? I level believe six. it would level be six. level 6 for a normal monk. I am neither of those That's things. That's true, you have one level of barbarian. Okay. Well, it so does a hit. 19 does hit? It does okay. hit. So that'll nine be 9, but if it Resists non magic, that'll no, be no, no. four. Uh, nine points of damage plus eight, and that's quite a lot. This, uh, this, this, uh, this golem is looking pretty messed up, boys. Looking pretty, pretty, pretty bad there. Written, uh, Sergey, is that everything? I should ask. That uh, is not quite everything. Oh, I landed okay. a hit with Cassandra, so she automatically it tries to inflict a wound. Oh, nice. Okay, necrotic damage. That's fantastic, con save. So, if it doesn't make the DC con, DC it 15? will take... Yeah. Uh, yeah, takes four points of damage. Um, this is a pretty messed up looking golem. It is bloody. And that will be my turn, other than Cassandra very loudly scolding the golems for hurting her friends. Can pumpkins get bloodied? I thought they would get rotten first. But I'm to say. Uh, all right, written. Written will move her full movement. One, two, three, four, five. I think she can make it to here. And um, she will. Ooh. Um. She is going to use the spell Moonbeam and cast Moonbeam on this golem. Ah, uh, damn. All right. Actually, well, if she can do the acid stream without touching her friends, she might do that instead. Acid stream? Mm hmm. Uh, what's the description? Stream of acid emanates from you in a line 30 feet long and 5 feet wide. Alright, I would like you to make a dex check to see if you can avoid Sergei and Amber. I will do that. If you climb on top of Sergei <laughs> and fire from above his head, you can be sure of not hitting him. <laughs> I... If if Sergei gives his consent, that is what written will do. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of small magic users that he's probably used to being the tank weapons platform. All right, so yeah, you <laughs> just from Arthur alone that is probably climb happening. Climb up on Sergei hmm. and go ahead and cast. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, she casts acid stream on the goblin to try and the melt goblin it. Or the golem? 
you get. Or the, the, golem. the golem. The golem, the golem, the golem, the golem, the golem, the golem. <laughs> right. For a second, you're like, goblin! Oh, wait, friend. <laughs> friend, friend, foe, friend, foe, foe, friend. Friend, foe. Is it a, um... Oh my god, is it, is it a dex or is it a... It's a dex save? Okay, I'll roll for that. I believe it's a con save? Oh wait, no. It is a dex save. It is a dex save. Actually, I am rolling dex. awfully. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, yeah, it takes ten points of damage. It's looking really bad. <laughs> um, Marshweed. Uh, uh, wait. Anything else for Britain? Britain? That is it. That's it. That's all I can do. Uh, so, uh, the one that, you know, hit me over the head with a pumpkin, yeah, that guy. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to, to hit with my, uh, Jalele club, um, so I believe that's a... It's an attack roll. Yeah, it's, a, it's attack roll, but I'm using, um, instead of strength, I'm using my wisdom, so... Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen That does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, and then for damage, I do um, uh, a D8, I believe. Just a club. I'm trying to double check to make sure. Uh, these weapons damage die becomes a D8. So. Nice. Yeah, it's just a one D8. Here we go. Seven, Seven points points. damage. Just go right on the head. I'm gonna jump up and just. Turn. And do you add your strength modifier to that? Oh, you're right. I add my wisdom, so it's a, so it's ten points. Ten points of damage. Uh, oh, this thing is barely holding on. Um, before Arthur's turn, it is. Uh, everybody needs to make deck saves for me. Okay. Come on. Is this more vines? This is no. This is the magic deck. Okay. Charlie, Seriously. you make it. Shannon, you make that's it. Twenty. Not twenty on that. Okay. Okay. You you do a backflip. <laughs> Thank you for that Shannon flavor. Makes it. Arthur makes it. Ooh. Sergey, you are on fire again. Susie, He's... written is on fire. <laughs> Sergey is used to the burning. So you got. You both are gonna take. Oof. Oh, eight points of damage as hey. the flames lick at you uh, maliciously. Oh, that's why I turtle suit. This guy is going to move <laughs> over here uh, and then hit the vines uh, come out of oh, his wait. pumpkin hands. What? Is, is that the one that's Arthur's oh, friend? Over there. That's the one that has been uh, tasked to attack the remaining enemy pumpkin. You can attack enemy it. Pump. Well, here's the thing. That one that you moved has the crown of madness on it, and my command was to go attack his friend. Hey. It's confused um, as to how it... Wait, how did it get past this anyway? Because it looks like... It looks like we've completely blocking this way off. Uh, it just, like barreled past you as best as it could, so it, you, it treated you like uh, difficult terrain. Assuming oh, that you guys let it you... pass. How long does Crown of Madness last? Or is it... One minute. And it's concentration. Okay. Does okay. Amber attack the golem? <clears throat> well, I'm I'm sorry, I'm just... Because, I mean, I looked at the spell and it's just like... Oh, never mind. That you can only um, you can't move and then attack. You can only attack and then move the creature that is an ally. It's a confusingly worded spell. But I mean, if you're if you're letting them just if you're letting it happen just like mind control or whatever, then uh, Ember won't attack it. You would know that this is how Arthur's Crown of Madness works, and when something is controlled like that, it is not hostile towards us. Okay. Okay, so not attacking it? I'm not, no. Okay. Uh, 
so from its uh, from its pumpkiny hands, uh, this vine uh, sprouts on both um, on both of them, and it's going to make two attacks and to attack to attack its buddy here. And the first one misses, but the second one does not. The um, vines uh, like they blaze with that ch- ever changing colored light, and it s- and it cracks one, but like. The um the other pumpkin guy kind of flinches out of the way, but the second one just cracks and like slams into uh, the head of this guy and deals damage, taking off a good portion of the head. This thing's barely standing. <laughs> uh, and this one is going to attempt to hit Sergey. Sergey does a does a thirteen hit your AC. No. I'm doing shit tonight. So, um, yeah, it tries to, uh, it tries to slam Duncan Pumpkin onto your head, and it fails. Uh, that means it's Arthur's turn. One second. Okay. The first thing I do is move to there. Uh, let me check one thing. You're concentrating, but you should still be good for like cantrips. Or cantrips are non-concentration based spells. Like yeah. I, if, if I had like a, a fireball, I could cast that. But I'm trying to see a vicious mockery. Uh, no, it has to be able to hear me, and this, these things cannot, so. That's what I thought. The horror of being a bard when your audience has no ears. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, and that's kind of also why I got as close as I did. Um, <coughs> how is, uh, how is, uh, uh, written and Sergei looking? You imagine, especially after your travels, that Sergei is not especially happy, and he is very nearly to the point some would call a bloody disaster. Okay. Britain is looking fabulous, hair blowing in the wind, just adrenaline pumping, so happy to be alive. Okay, so in that case, uh, Arthur will cast Healing Word at Sergei. Yay! Thank you, Sergei. Alright, not bad. Six points. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> you get back six <laughs> points of damage, and I will mark myself down another first level spell. Uh, and then, uh, who is after... Oh yeah, and since that was a bonus action, I'm actually going to use my actual action to help uh, Amber, attack the golem next turn. So you have advantage. Okay. All right then. Um, if that's your turn, Arthur, Amber, it's up. Yep. All right. First off, um, regular great sword attack against the nearly dead golem. That hits. Roll damage. Hold on a sec. Mm-hmm. Go in again to see if I got a crit. Nine I points of damage? Well, I got... No, that... I rolled again because he gave me advantage. I was seeing if it was a critical hit, but it wasn't. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, nine points of damage. After all. And After uh, all. that's it. That's a dead golem. Okay, hey. good. Uh, so, I take out the first golem, and then I'm going to slip past... Uh, these two and attack the second with my other attack. Alright. Ten does Ugh, not hit. <clears throat> Alright. Um, let's see. That was just ten feet of movement. So one, two, three, four. I am going to move over here so it can't flee from us. Okay. 
Oh, by the way, at the end of its turn, the golem does get another wisdom save to see if it can break the spell. It didn't last turn. Okay. But, yeah. And, uh, my turn's over. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the thing again to just see if uh, whether or not being attacked causes it to have uh, another one right then, and no, does not. Good, Vaughn. Okay, so I can use my bonus action to since that creature died, uh, hunters mark that guy. All right, um. Sorry. So. Okay. Hunters mark. Uh. I didn't do that for the last one. So I'm going to roll my attack, and my proficiency bonus is actually plus three. Uh, 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 uh. Just rolled it twice. Sorry. The eight plus three. So I guess I don't hit. No, that does not hit. Yeah, okay, but I do have another attack. I did look it up. So it's, yeah. Under my features and traits, extra attack after level three, I believe. So I'm going to try it again. Go for it. Uh, do you just want to take, do you want to take that other dice roll or? Yeah, I'll let you okay. go. Cause that like, that was like debt with advantage. <laughs> but, um, well, no, no. That wouldn't be with advantage, but whatever. A 13 oh, okay. does hit though. Okay. Cool. Um, that is for my longbow. Uh, did I say 1d8, I believe? Plus 4. So, 1d8 plus 4. And I'm going to roll my Hunter's Mark Ooh. as well. Eh, eh, eh. Spells. Lots of clicking. There you go. Okay, that's oh, not a whole okay. lot, but... Uh... <laughs> But that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So it's you've awesome. got, hey. you've um, you've done eleven points of damage to this golem. He's not terribly happy about that. Anything else? Um, that is. Um, can I use my movement to get a little bit closer? Sure. Okay. So I want uh twenty feet is fine. Okay. That's it. Sergey. Alrighty. I'm going to move up onto the other side of the creature here. I don't believe we're playing with flanking rules, but I'm a barbarian anyway. So there's always the chance of doing... No, I'm not a good enough barbarian for reckless attack right now. Never mind that strategy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's I fine. I know how much you love that, 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 that strategy. God, I love that strategy. But uh, anyway, I will do a Raging Warhammer to its face. Raging Warhammer. That hits. Yeah. 11 points of damage. Very nice. Which also means it needs to roll against the okay. wounding. And that is a fail. So another two to points of, a, of necrotic damage. So that's ooh, okay. And then he will kick it in the face of his monk unarmed. If that 16 hit. hits. And that is a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this guy is, um, <clears throat> this guy's pretty hurt. And that will end Sergei's turn. Written. All right. Written will... Um, Rin will use a bonus action um, to make one of her javelins a magic weapon. And... Actually, no. She's going to do Divine Smite. Instead. So she's going to mm -hmm. Divine Smite. And you said they were fiends, right? Uh, Jason? You felt fiendish energy. Okay. Uh, Divine you Smite, don't... you can choose to do that after you hit. Oh. Yes. I thought you knew that. Oh. Uh, so if you want, you can... Well, let me see here. Mm. 
No, you would have to choose between using Divine Smite or making your weapon magical. Gotcha. In wow. that case, I'm a... <laughs> yeah, I'm just... I'm gonna run up to Sky and I'm just gonna hit him twice with the Sunblade because Sunblade. That's fantastic. He's going to be um, sun-kissed after this. <laughs> no. Uh, right. Dude. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. Sun-dried <laughs> pumpkin seeds. <laughs> now you've got Sergei doing it. It's infectious. It's some mimetic disease. <laughs> A 25. Oh, Look at that. God. Damn! <laughs> All right, that is that is a crit right there. Go ahead, roll your damage, and roll that die twice. Uh, yeah. Is it okay? Yes. Um. And the sunblade what? does what kind of damage? What is the what are the properties? Radiant. I it is definitely radiant damage. This thing is. <laughs> Whatever. Just lightsaber noises as you impale it. Wait, if you strike him down, Tonight. he'll only become stronger. <laughs> it's a plus Do you roll twice, or you just times number by? Oh, actually, you have a macro for this. Not Uh, wow, okay, let's... I just like the thing... I don't... I don't, I don't know think that's... that works quite correctly. It's 1d8. Yeah, it's just doing the... It's just doing it once. Yeah, it, I mean, it's doing 1d8 twice. 1d10 and then 1d8. Yeah. It, I still... So Long sword, it should be well 2d8 because it's a crit, and then 48 on the divine smite. If you smout, yeah, if oh, you yeah. smite. So it's I do be a total of 6d8 plus, plus your strength or dexterity modifier radiant damage. And this is why paladins can be disgusting at times because it's like I crit and I just dump my highest level smite into <laughs> right, it. Yeah, so prepare to die twice. So go ahead and. I guess click that a second time because it has the two-handed function and the one-handed. Uh, by the way, which one? How were you using it? I need to know. I was definitely one-handed because I have a shield in the other. All right, in the other yeah, hand. Uh, click it one more time. Yeah, click. that's part of why my own Warhammer hasn't been doing super damage. I'm using it one-handed to use a shield as well. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Yeah. Did it work again? Oh, there he goes. We'll be getting it soon. There, yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Okay. So, 8 plus 16. Uh, got, wow, damn. Okay, then. And then, add. You, are you going to add in your smite? I am indeed, sir. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> I think they should work. Okay, that's you telling you what it is. And then and you now... click on the one, the option that you want to use. Okay, I'm gonna roll it first level. Cause we ain't had the big baggie yet, I think. And it's doubled because you crit, so it's 48. Yep, 48 damage. And, and it's... is it an undone or a fiend? Well, um, I'll let you know what happens here. So, you, th you just, like, how do you kill it? So, we'll run up, drawing the, hopefully not a lightsaber, as she goes. Um, she's gonna give it an extra whack. And then it just glows all the much brighter with some divine energy um, from her very practical god. 
And then she's just gonna chuck it straight into the golem's eye and yes. watch as it goes straight through. Yeah, your sword pierces through this gourd head. Um, the like at every juncture, every joint in like where the pumpkins fuse, light begins to bleed outwards, and then it just erupts. Everybody, give me a deck save. Mm. Well, specifically everyone around it. So, written oh. Ser- <laughs> Sergey and Amber. Mm. That's enough. So as this thing disintegrates, I open my eyes from the light and say to uh, uh, Ritten, um, so what god do you serve and are they taking applicants? <laughs> okay, Sergey, you're the only one who gets <laughs> covered in pumpkin Hey, look, sometimes you see a paladin. Strings of seeds and like, and like, and like just flesh just cover you. Yes. <laughs> but it's Written all pumpkin. Backhand whispers. Maybe d- d- don't mention that with the three guys I came with. <laughs> that wasn't very ladylike. Why do you even care what they say? I mean, you're a fighter, clearly. Do they not expect you to be one? They expect me to follow a destiny. I just think it's a more refined destiny than the one that I'm finding suits me best. You should totally with that distribution. And um, Sergey, put it on your uh, on you, and then they'll 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 know you know that they can't stop you. <laughs> as amusing an idea as this is, and as much as Sergey is absolutely willing to help you, I believe this is something you must confront in your own way. They care about you, and so it is your problem. But Sergey will be there to support you. And if they do try to drag you back home, Sergey will, of course, break their kneecaps if you wish. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, kneecaps broken. The pumpkins around you. I would to this uh, to see what's done this way. All right. Uh, but the pumpkins around you um, begin to, like, f- like, flicker and flare. And then the ever-changing colors begin to fade and become just regular candle wicks. You hear that giggle again. And a little girl uh, appears before you. She's standing right here. Very... Uh, wait, hold on. She's standing right here. She's standing right here. And she just... She's in a, a tiny little dress and she's got kind of a porcelain face. And her ha- head slightly to the side. And she says, Thanks for playing with me. And then fades away. Hi, little creepy ghost girl. You are what? welcome. But, um... You note, um, that each Why? of the golems has left behind uh, one of those vines, and it seems to have more of a, a handle to it. Uh, are you saying what? this is a vine whip? I'm saying that it is a vine... It is... It is... It is called a j- jack-o'-lantern's whip. I look to the paladin and say, um, do you still think the thing is present? Come again? Uh, do you still think the thing is present? Um, oh wait, uh, maybe the last one is still working. Uh, how long does um... it last? That was a very good question. How Divine instance? Question? I'm going to find the answer to that question. Um, I think it's only kind of a one-time thing. So I will cast it again. Yeah, it's not really a spell, it doesn't look like. Yeah, no, it's it, just a feature. So, yeah. You, yeah, you just, like, like pause for a moment and, like, send, send out your senses around. And, no, it's it's gone. I think whatever I was sensing before is is uh, has taken a hike. <clears throat> Can oh. I go back and get one of those masks? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. Hey. <laughs> okay. 
Marshvee picks up the um, the the whip from the creature beside her. You pick it up, and like, you you know that it is called Jack O' Lantern's whip. The handle is made of like the stem, like a stem, but like hardened and a little bit leathery, so it's got a good grip to it. The whip is made of vine, but it's stronger somehow, and uh, there are like little thorns all the way all the way down it. You give it an experimental crack, and uh, the the those wicked flames go all up all up and down, uh, reaching to the end uh, end of the whip, making that cracking sound. Little spark flares in the air. Ah! So she played a little trick, and we got a little treat. You also have a little bit of a, a sense of something. You feel like if you were to like th- like whip this out at at a creature, uh, that it could just, it would, you could will it to wrap around it a couple of times, a, di- a couple of times per rest. Three times per short rest, you can, uh, you can <laughs> attempt to restrain a creature, DC 12. Marjorie looks over at Arthur and like, uh, don't worry. <laughs> also, the you- whip does a, does a, um, does fire damage instead of anything else, and it's considered magical. <clears throat> Is anyone good with whips? Unfortunately, <laughs> no. My my tiny hands, and he holds up his his paw like hands. He's like, I am not the um the fighting type, and his hands look very ginger and very delicate. Sergey understand the principle of whips, but Cassandra would get very lonely. It was most things. So if no one else wants it, I'll take one. <laughs> oh, I'm, good. I'm going to continue searching the maze because. Oh uh, yeah, no. Um, you guys can continue looking around the maze. Doesn't trust yeah, that what's in that? Is over. Yeah, I don't trust this place either. Are we still on initiative or no? No, you're not actually. Okay. Arthur is behind Amber and he's like letting the, the strong person go. I'm gonna rejoin uh, the group if that's cool. By the way, which mask a did regular, I get? A regular maze. The pumpkins are massive, uh-huh. uh, and they're like grinning at you, like goofily. Uh, different faces every so often. Like, there's some are taller, some are shorter. Uh, most of them are above above five feet in height. And the Whoa. exit of the uh, of the maze is right here. Arthur goes through the pumpkins, and he's he's booking it towards the exit. <laughs> um, not to over much bother, but when one of you with the magic powers gets the chance, would you be willing to press the digitation pumpkin guts off of Sergey? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, cast uh, cure wounds on on Sergey. You did really well, and just like kind of like reaches up on her tippy toes to pat as close to his head as she can. Sergey will be mad her and thank um, her. And let me roll uh, roll it. I'm going to roll it at uh, level two. So that's uh, darn it. Where's my cure wounds? Being the jigger. I believe cure wounds does a, a d8 per spell level cast set. Yeah. Plus your spell casting modifier. So that's 2d8 plus three for you. So roll two D eight plus three. Seventeen points of uh healing. Yeah, that definitely right. gets me back tipped up and thank you kindly. And then as one more thing, Marsha wants or Marshweed <laughs> Marsha <laughs> Marshweed uh wants this into the about center of this entire um uh Maze. Place. Uh, entire maze, and then she wants to cast plant growth for eight hours. You're going to leave the party for eight hours? No, no, it, you, you cast the spell for eight, eight hours. Long, and it it's, uh... Oh gosh, where is it? Plant growth. You do it for 
the eight hours, if you have it go on for eight hours, it will uh, enrich, enrich the land. Okay. Uh -huh. Is that just a one-off spell then? And you can walk away oh, from it? Not concentration? Yeah. No. All a half mile radius center at the point within range comes enriched for one year. Okay, okay then. Okay, but that is the casting time, eight hours. So you have to stay there for eight hours to do this. Oh, uh, all right. Then I'm just going to do. Oh, yeah, eight. no. It's like, well, it says one action or eight hours. Is this. There's two different ritual? ways you can use it. Uh, it's a weird mixture of ritual and attack spell. The attack is but an I, action, but the ritual is eight hours. Yes, no, okay. Yeah, I, I'm reading that now. All right, yeah, no. just, so I'm unless next, you want to stay there for eight hours. No, all right. Then there's the 150 feet. She's going to double the size of these pumpkins. Hey. Why? <laughs> Even <bigger. laughs> I don't know, but Van loves it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no. Just they become even more big. Um, I can't make them bigger right on the screen because this is a map <laughs> that I made. But um, there you go. Thomas is waiting outside of uh, the pumpkin the pumpkin maze. And when you guys exit, he's just like, I don't know what you did, but... Like, I saw the weird flames and it was... And then they went away? There was the spirit of a small child within the maze. He didn't want someone to... With. All right, uh, your retainers. Uh, your retainers uh, exit the maze. At this point, they are um, burnt and uh, covered in like what look like whippings. Oh, and they are they are very very upset. Oh dear friends, I'm so glad you made it out alive. As you can see, I am unhurt. And we have rid this this uh, pumpkin patch from an evil fiend. Why did and you actually... uh, all is well. You have some sort of multiple personality disorder, or are, are you possessed? <laughs> no, he's, she's talking to the retainers. Yeah, Ar Arthur will go up to Amber's like, Ixne on the Octe. I know. I, I like. This code switching is just completely baffling, Amber. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, okay. Uh, Arthur will go. <laughs> Arthur will go. Royalty is a fickle thing. Best not question it, my good sir or madam. Sorry, madam. So the <laughs> the attendants start trying to clean up, um, clean up written. Futilely, even as they're just like trying to like maintain their dignity, and Thomas is like, "Well, this is this has been phenomenal. Uh, let's head back to the town." Before we do, good Sir Thomas, would you know anything of magic masks in maze? No. <laughs> He's apparently blessed with ability to disguise self as long as one is scary. Do you show and... him the mask? Yes. All right. Uh, he looks at it for uh, like a minute or so, and then goes, "I've never seen that in my life." Scary mask. You mean though. you did not put them in there? I believe him. Well, why would I put masks in the maze? I believe that. Uh, Thomas has given you like from body language and his tone of voice and everything. You don't think that he's lying. Yeah, I'll trust Thomas. Perhaps with trick of the spirits. They like to trick and treat around this time of year, yeah? Oh, yeah, that is, the, that is the local superstition, yes. Would you care for mask? There were eight of them, but there are fewer than that of us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you know that once you picked up a mask, you were unable to touch any of the other ones. Interesting. So, uh, Sergei has one. Mushreed is a tiny pumpkin dog. Booga 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 booga. All right. So you guys head back to the to Hollowville. Yes. All right. So you guys make your way Finn back there. Finn glances at uh, Finn will glance at Amber and say, "Did you?" I thought you had a question about um, any recent deaths. Was that you? 
Yes, I, I asked Tom if he didn't answer. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Chaltup. I legitimately did not hear you. Um, he, he's just like, recent deaths? Uh, and he, a, a strange look comes over his face, uh, and he doesn't say anything for about 30 seconds straight, and then, um, as though he, nothing had happened, he just says, no, I can't think of anything on strange or recent deaths. Could I? I don't even need to know that answer. A strange look comes over his face, let me check. Is that a bomb? I, I accept adventure for now, but I'm yeah. Anyhow, you oh, return back to the party and everything's going power. great. Hey. What was that? Oh, that's the barn. I thought it was a pile of hay. Oh, no. I was talking about this place as the barn. I just oh, imagined it to be a barn. Not, it's not actually a barn. There's just ah, different kinds okay. of places. Uh, For real, is that a bomb? <laughs> somebody drew a bomb. Oh. <laughs> not we have to use it. I don't know who would put that there. The ghosts. It's ghosts. Good. Too many ghosts. So, uh, one of the things that Arthur is pondering when he is walking back to town is kind of like, what kind, because this was clearly a spirit, but... Would, after everything seen and how the spirit manifests, could Arthur make a knowledge check to discern what kind of spirit that was? Hey, yeah, go ahead. We know it was at least associating with scenes of some sort. Okay. Uh, would this, which kind of knowledge check would this be? I have all of them, but I just want to roll the right one. For spirits, I will, it could be knowledge arcana or knowledge religion. I'll accept that. I'm going to go with religion because I think that's the more apropos knowledge skill. Okay. Might I? Nah, his 17 is probably good enough. Although I was going to roll for the larks of it if you permitted yeah, me as well. You, yeah, go ahead. By all means. I can do an insight did, too. You do better than me. <laughs> okay. Did I mention um, that Sergey's background is actually a cloistered scholar and he's a major reader with library access? That's fantastic. <laughs> okay, can, Arthur, can I roll? Can I roll insider perception? Uh, for what? Does it matter? Uh, what? Whatever you're doing, uh, uh, to see what the spirit was. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, uh, Arthur, you recall legends about, um, like, very, like, basic, very mischievous sort of fiends, kind of poltergeists, uh, that were able to possess items and, and, and create things. Uh, Sergei, in a shocking twist, you do actually know a little bit about this area, and you know that there is, you read about a specific tale. <laughs> of a young lady, a young girl, who, uh, who died in an unfortunate manner, but would occasionally show up at times when uh, supernatural power was great, and get people to play with her. However, she plays rough, and there are many, many different tales in how she plays, and it's all very gory. Uh, for the most part, but there are a few, um, a few surviving ac survivor accounts of those who managed to uh, complete whatever whatever play it is that it is that will calm her, and she will then leave once satisfied. Sergey will explain this in between just absolutely wrecking a sandwich possibly half the size of Arthur. <laughs> okay. Ar Ar Arthur would be wrapped in intention listening to you, and he'd be like, that is, that's very interesting. I mean, I I've had a theory that, you know, this could be a, a ghost of some kind, some, some minor mischievous fiend, but you have unraveled what had happened here. Uh, very impressive, Sergei. 
is not trouble. But if she only appears when there are good supernatural movies, then why is the supernatural movie that coming to this region? Well, we know that the villagers were mentioning that this is Day of Spirits. Perhaps it's not simply a colloquial holiday. Maybe it's actual confluence of the spirits or something. Sergei does not know. He does not do magic. He just likes reading. Also, oh, child, have your little bit soft. I could also make any kind of check to see if that checks out. Uh, <laughs> if you want to make a knowledge history check. <laughs> Sorry, my mic was up. Um, All right. Written instructs for retainers to chase the cheese. Oh dang! Knowledge grit. Okay, Arthur yeah, knows you, all um... the things. <laughs> Arthur has read a book about this subject exactly, and now he's going to give an NPR-like dissertation on it. Yeah, while you're giving uh, a very in-depth talk about the lo- the love, the life, the love, the uh, the horror that is uh, Annabelle, uh, you're just like talking, talking, and talking, and talking, and another villager comes up to Thomas and whispers uh, in his ear, and uh, he. He comes over. He comes over to you and, and to your group and says, "I, I do hate to trouble you, but where? I don't. I don't suppose you can. You can hear that. And if you pay very close attention, uh, you might be able to hear uh, strange music being played from far, far away. I. It. It sounds like music, and Arthur will start to give a." Uh like a, a, a musical theory on this because Bard. And he says, well, it's coming, whatever that strange music is. It's very, very, it's rather loud and it's it's making people a little nervous because it's coming from our graveyard. Of course yeah. it is. Hmm. Let's way to the graveyard. Well, you have to yes, the road. point us to a this reminds Sergei of the Toten Tons. Yeah, I'm sure the bard knows, but for the sake of the others, his classical musical piece entitled The Dance of the Dead, essentially. Oh, that's a very <laughs> lovely apropos song at this point. Oh, oh my. Okay. Do, so you just. Do gonna... we want to take a short rest here? Uh, yeah, you can know. take the How benefits of a short both? rest. You can definitely take the benefits of a short rest. You've been there long okay. enough. Well, I don't even need a short rest. I literally took no damage and expended no resources. <laughs> I'm, if you guys want and want to roll some hit die, I will play a Song of Rest, which is an extra d6 onto whatever you would roll if you'd use hit dice to heal. Well, Marsh, we did. Hmm. Marshweed already tipped me back to full, so I don't need to use the short wrist. Okay, fantastic. Marshweed regains, like, 14 points. Beautiful. I only needed four. That's why I rolled one. It's just kind of like, will I get it? Won't I get it? It's like, oh, nope, seven. Yeah, I'm back to full. And at this point, why not use it? Well... During a short rest, I can um, recover a couple spell slots. Let's so get it. So you guys. I'm just saying, maybe I will take the short rest to get that one point of key back. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. Hey, yeah, there you go. That's that's a nice thing about key. All right, so that's you. Just you guys uh, decide to head out, head south to the graveyard then. Yeah. Uh. Ooh. Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes, the group is in, in is in is in the unanimous. You make your way through the Let forest. Go. It is darker. The, the further and further that you get away from it, um, you see that it like fog begins to to creep in from the forest. Um, the moon is high above you. It is large, full, and yellow. You guys are listening the music. Begins to get louder. Okay, let's party. Before we left, uh, Ritten gave her retainers the task 
of getting her a very specific kind of cheese from a child who was very intent on running away with it. All right, put you guys selves so right here. Uh, I don't know how yeah. to put myself in there. I don't know how to put myself in there either. Specific. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got you. I think again the what what uh, Vin said was if you go to your character and buy a thing and yeah, but use they don't the picture, have that there. That's the reason. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna do. Why did we switch to dub stuff? Got my yeah, you'll find out. Is <laughs> this? <laughs> this is the graveyard party. And okay, I like her. And We're on. Say, oh, our sweet is still nice. pumpkin golf this whole time. And, uh, Sergey is suspect we make grave mistake. This is not normal necromancy. This is necrodancy. <laughs> grave mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur looks at I, you uh, with uh, oh love and, and, and hatred at the same time. It's like, Sergey, that was the most amazing pun I've ever heard. Where did you learn it? How did you come up with it? I must know your secrets, friend. His son told me. <laughs> That's your hammer wife, right? Hammer waifu. Oh my Haifu. god, that is amazing. Amber looks up... And Sergey and says, eh, it was all right. <laughs> uh, but to, to this, like, I mean, the only thing I had was, like, this seems like a graveyard shift to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, is that a G? <laughs> and I think the one next to him has a mohawk? Oh, you have a character out written? Okay. Do you want that one or the one that I picked for you? Sorry, but. I think they're the same, so it doesn't matter. Uh, they both wear in blue. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep my own. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just take it. I'm just delete this one right here because there's no need to have extras on the field. <laughs> is that still a new wind-up scene made of bones in this back, or is that supposed to be a topic? You know, Sorry. I'm not quite sure. It could also just be a broken sword hilt. Okay. So anything's um, you guys, possible with weird you guys, uh, 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 like walk up and this buddy, this guy right here is he's a fun little skeleton. He's got a he's actually wearing a bo a bowler. He's got one glass eye that like travels between his eye sockets, and he's like he's like dancing like side to side. He's having a good time and everything. When he sees it, he's like, "Whoa, fleshies! What's up? Hey!" Oh, oh! Th Hello. These are not typical. These are not typical undead. Uh, well, let, let's talk with them. What in all my okay. is going on here? And then, then he's in. Then before before you guys actually walk up to talk to him, uh, the music the music stops, and uh, you hear a booming voice out across across the entire graveyard. He says, Yo, welcome to the yard. This is the place where everything goes bump in the night. And I'm your MC, DJ G Rave. Let's get it. Boom. Okay, get this fun. So to get approve of DJ G Rave. You can see Rit, uh, Rin, Amber just getting angrier and angrier as he makes these puns. Ar Arthur is happier and happier. You can see Man, is there is a ghoul, ghoul all the way up at that altar, and he's just, he's just like, there are magic circles all around him, and he's just, like, twisting them back and forth, and pushing things up and down, and he, like, he has a set of headphones o over his head, and he's just, like, bobbing along to it. Arthur, we came here to f investigate disturbance, but we may have found discovery of lifetime. You must learn this DJ magic for your bard train. Arthur is is literally just looking at the DJ, and he is slowly walking forward as if like I must have this music. You got the skeleton ready for the start. Oh, you might want to be careful. Why? Like it's it's clearly this is a well. Uh, 
I, I wouldn't say this is it, it's as lively. I feel that might be insulting, but it is definitely one hell of a party. Um, I start dancing with my frog. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're not wrong. I'm like, I mean, there are like all kinds of you know, strange things going on in there. I'm like, they, that'll affect you flesh types. Because uh, like, there's a lot of magic going on around here. I don't know if you can tell. I'm immune. You know. uh, what did I, am, am I immune to anything? I don't know. Go. Those of you who are immune to charm might, might have a little bit of an yes. easier time getting across it. But he, he tells I'm me, immune to being charmed. Listen, it's, it's just really, really simple here. Uh, like, 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 where, what do you guys uh, want to do? If you're here to dance, just go ahead and dance. Uh, I just be careful like who you bump into, because uh, they might want to take you on as a partner, and uh, you'll be dancing for well till dawn. I already have a partner. Thanks, but no thanks. Oh well. well at dawn, we're all gonna go go away, because well, we, we can really only meet like this once a year. I'm gonna go dance with that bunch of grapes? What is that in the middle? That? Uh, yes. That is a bunch of rats. Oh yeah, somebody go dance with a bunch of rats. <laughs> Maybe we um, have to win a dance-off. What, what is this yellow thing here? That is fire. It's just, like, floating there. Ew. I don't put it. Can Arthur I... will, uh... Go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, can I tell everybody to, uh, make room and create my, uh, magic bonfire again? Oh, that'd be really cool. Uh, but like, but like well, not to see rude, but I'd like to know what, what you guys are all here for. Oh, uh, the local village back there uh, told us that there was music and it was disconcerting to the people. So I guess we're on a bit oh, of a noise oh, complaint. Are we being too loud? I think they're 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 trying to have their own festivity. A little bit, I would imagine, because it's a carrying quite a ways off to the local village, and they are concerned because they've never heard this music, but, I, man, this thing makes you want to, you know, groove. I, I would say that this is a, a, a jumping. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, you might want to, like, I want, like, and at this moment, he's just like, let's turn it up! And he turns, and the music gets even louder. And he's like, oh, well, listen, uh, DJ G. Gray is actually a pretty cool ghoul, if I do say it so myself. But, uh, like, you are gonna have to get his attention. Uh, if you get over there and, and ask him to turn it down, I'm sure he'll do it. Okay, I'm going to try and do that then. Uh, well, I'd be are... careful, uh, depending on how you go forward, you, you might get, uh, you know, Caught. Everyone's oh. just kind of caught up in the moment. You know? Nobody means any harm. Uh, my frog right. can long jump 20 feet and high jump 10 feet. Can I ride him and jump over some people? Yeah, you know what? I will give you, um, you're going to make a couple of checks. It'll take three checks okay. to get across the jump to where you did it. So, um, who wants to go? I would like to try to go. I'd like to try to go as well. I'll join in, and I'm going to tap to my little amulet, and it lets me, um, uh, it casts jump for me. Okay. So I'm going to have a jump speed as well. Okay, so Vaughn's going to I will join on the frog if there's room, but if not, I'm cool mm. with staying behind. I think I can ride him, I think, since he's an animal companion, but I'm not sure. He's a giant frog. I'm not sure that's... He... Let me just double check. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not positive. Let me check something really quick, because there's a spell I have that might be helpful. Is it enlarged? <laughs> yeah, he's just a medium animal, and I do think I'm bigger than him, so... Uh, he's a According to the... Always useful Fex Labs, which allows me to go and do all of this math without having to do all of this math. I will post how far Step of the Wind and this big boy should be able to go. But, uh. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, you need something that's large size or larger. Okay, that's I'm it. With I'm with the that. that so I just want to... I just want to blast Grave with a chill touch. Or G-Rave, rather, with a chill touch to get his attention. Um... Oh, on the And that, is that a is that an attack spell or is that a save? It's an attack spell. All right, go ahead, roll your attack. Yeah, twenty-one. Uh, twenty-one. Okay. Uh, no, that did not. So, hit. That did not hit. What I sent was just basically the map. Just turn. barely off, but um. It did not hit. When we're all doing our jumpings, at least for Sergei's part of doing the jumpings. Okay, that is that is quite a bit of quite a bit of jump there, sir. Yeah. Twenty feet horizontally. <laughs> Plus step of the wind. With a running start, it's forty feet horizontally. Hot damn. Okay, that's interesting. Um. Also, Fex Labs is incredibly useful for avoiding tedious math. <laughs> yeah, Amber, you can, Amber would need to hit a 22 to uh, to strike. What ends up happening is your your skeletal fig- finger goes all across, just zooms right across, uh, goes near and tries to tap him on the shoulder, and it comes in contact with like something kind of ephemeral. Can I try to jump hmm. across the graves? On the uh, right hand side? You can. It's an acrobatics check? Yeah. Uh, we're going to make three checks per person who tries. Because it's going to take you three times. Okay. Three checks to get across. Alright, so you want me to make. Okay. You want me to make three right now, or. Who would like to go first? That is the question. Who is going to go first? <laughs> we can just roll initiative real quick. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you go first. Uh, okay. Now, the one thing I was going to do just to get a plan out is I was actually going to cast Enthrall and this was going to make me kind of the center of attention so maybe it would make it easier for everyone else to go and do their thing so maybe I could help get, by giving advantage to everybody um, basically I'd walk up to the group yeah. and cast it and then just start dancing as it were All right, it would be right. cool because I have a plus 7 to acrobatics and I uh, have a plus seven to stealth too. If that's give, one of the checks, yeah, I, will I don't give know. Everybody, uh, you, for the first check advantage, if you do in I am, okay. and I will step forward and pretty much just go. Watch this, and he casts and yeah. He starts to dance, dance uh, like dance. Uh, to the music, as it were. All the Aww, multitudes so of cute. different like entities like turn, and they're like, "Oh yeah, go puppy, go puppy, go puppy." Okay, like he he kind of looks like a little like angry at being called a puppy. He's like, but he just kind of he kind of just smiles and kind of keeps going with the bit, as it were, because he's a professional. He's so good though. If you'd like, I can roll performance to see, like, how, yeah, how I do. Yeah, give me a performance check. And here comes the other thing. All right, I can know it. Only a 19. Only a 19. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Everyone's enjoying it. All right, uh, who's first? You're going to give um, me uh, an athletics or an acrobatics check. I'll go first. Or the monk can go. If you wouldn't go mind, first. I'll... Go first. I'll uh, okay. do ten feet running to get the running start, and then I will do athletics to try to jump forty feet as per the effects slabs over to there. Okay. Um, Using step of the wind to do dash action and double jump. Yeah, athletics with advantage. That, so is that, enough. Is... that is enough. Yeah, you make it. You make it uh, all the way to that to that time stop. Great. And That's that great. is fifty feet total out of eighty. So I will just walk oh, down gonna, over. We're going to let the other people catch up to this. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I can go next. Um, let's see, what is that? 20 feet and then. Thirty more acrobatics check. Is that cool with you? Yep, acrobatics with advantage. Okay, what did I get? That's is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. You like like okay. ambles it up. Yeah, that's enough. There you no. go. You're, like you're <laughs> jumping from from grave to grave and everything, and like there are a few people who are like mm-hmm, like watching you, just like yeah, having a great time hey, as, they play, as they like, enjoy the graveyard. The Rave Yard. Yeah. Oh my gosh, is the 20, final yeah. boss gonna be Rave Lord Nido? <laughs> Alright, who's next trying to get across? Um, Marshy can try. Alright. Marshy is gonna, um, run, get a, run, uh, a running start for t- at 25 feet going, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25 here, and then from here, uh, with her jump spell, jump 30 feet. Alright. Give me an athletics so, yeah, or acrobatics check. Exactly. With advantage. All right. Yes. No, my hat. Um, two acrobatics. All right, 14. A 14 is, is, isn't enough. You, um... You like when well, you do jump, you make it all the way to where you would have made it. Um, mm-hmm. But now I need you to make a wisdom save. Oh, okay. Sixteen. Okay. Um, for a like, okay. So put your put your character where they would be after they made the jump. All right, there. Right there. Yeah. Um. The music hits you all of a sudden, and suddenly you're just like, whoa. And you just want to dance and dance and dance, and you realize that you're being pulled into something and manage to pull yourself out. And then you see kind of a wisp of cloud that you, like, there's fog everywhere, but this tiny little wisp of cloud that's kind of blending in seamlessly. Nearly trapped. I don't like this. Zoids, guys! Anybody else trying to go across? Or... Uh, yeah. First of all, I'm going to throw back my potion of growth and become large. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! For the next three hours. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Alright, <laughs> so can you make my potion big? Apparently, players can't resize their own tokens. Oh. It's not on my roll 22. I forgot to put it on there. Okay. Well. All right. Yeah, for, the Break two potions I got were a great healing and a this. Let's see him. Okay. Thank you. Can you, can you make me big? Sorry? Can you make my token big? Oh, can I make your token big? Oh, you were asking me to make your token big. There you go. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you were asking. Okay. Um, alright. So, I'm going to try and cross these graves as a big person. Alright, uh, athletics check with advantage. One, two, four, five. Or acrobatics. Your choice. Uh, athletic. Yeah, you are able You're to so leap over the fog and, and uh, fog and mist from grave to grave. Mm-hmm. 
That's fantastic. Okay. And that my turn. Okay. Um, is Written gonna stand back and just kind of divide? Susie. Susie. She's dark on the video. I know. Oh no. No, I think she just. No, no, she's coming uh, back. Uh, she's, uh, hey, turn it off and on again, right? Right. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's let's have a say on Susie. If you can hear us, are you with us? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought now? I heard sign. I thought I heard. Now? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Susie the spirit. Yes, we hear you. Yay! Wait, can you Tell really us. hear me now? The yes, wisdom of the great beyond of yeah. the non-digital life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is it that Your video is not on, but... Video schmidio. Um, I am going to... I'm gonna go to the side, um, same side as Amber, and I'm going to cast Channel Divinity Abjure the Extra Planner. What? Um, so this thingamajiggy, use your Channel Divinity to castigate, castigate unworldly beings. Um, all elemental phase fiend or aberrations within 30 feet that can hear you must make a wisdom saving throw. So if these are any of those things, they have to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. I'm gonna spend um, a, a minute here actually making a few throws here. Um. Um. Okay, so what ends up happening is you hold up your holy symbol and you're, just, and you're like, turn! And, um, uh, this entity here, that entity over here, uh, that guy right there, this one here, uh, and, like, one that, and something that's here that, that you hear, they, they all kind of like, you hear voices like, hey, not cool! Um, they're not turning, but they're just like, they're just like, oh! Party and then I will the bug, cast Misty Step. Okay. And teleport thirty feet. All right. Um, I'm not even gonna make you um, because of Misty. What Misty Step does, you just make that. That's fine. All right. So for the second thing, uh, Sergey. I had 30, yo, 10, 40, yeah, 30 feet of movement left, so I was just going to go and try to bounce onto this little patch of ground next to the spider web and not into the spider web and the tomb there. Go ahead and make an athletics or acrobatics check to do it. You make above a 10, you do make, you make mm -hmm. all your movement. I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a wisdom saving throw. Fully noted. Let me go give you those two numbers right first. Do, 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 do. So, 27. And then wisdom save. Yeah, he probably failed and started to dance. Yeah, no, you, um, like, a, an ephemeral spirit kind of comes down, um, is, like, in midair, and is dancing in midair, and you pass right into it, uh, and it possesses you. <laughs> and so it's just kind of like, it's, like, doing the robot and, like, moving around, just dancing and having a great time. And it, it doesn't even seem to really register that it's possessed either. Alright, 
It appears that our dear friend Sergey has made a grave mistake. Nope. Nope. Not okay. No, no. Sergey is just getting into the spirit of things. Ah, <laughs> uh, so the spirit has entombed itself within you? <laughs> oh. Vaughn, I believe you were next. It has been um, dead to right. I'm reading something real quick, so let me... So it's possessed him. Uh, okay. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't think I can do anything except for take my uh, shadow to others. Never mind. Oops. My um, dash action uh, acrobatics check. Alright. Yeah, you actually I think that, make that, it. Can you give me an intelligence saving throw? Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, not my strongest suit, but... Ooh, there you very go. nice. Okay, there you so go. you're in an area where you're seeing a bunch of basically dancing lights, and they're flashing and going okay. and like moving around really intricate patterns, and it's just, it's you're like watching it, it's just kind of entrancing. Uh, and then you realize, whoa, this is kind of entrancing. Okay. And shake it off. Okay. D- do I notice anything else about it? No, it's just really pretty. Okay. Um, can I make a- an investigation roll? Yeah, go for it. Uh, what are you investigating? Okay. Um, I'm investigating uh, whether or not they're are hidden characters among us? Would that be insight? Or... Uh, that would probably be more... Yeah, no, investigation works. Investigation? Okay. Just so I can... Oh, fuck. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, you're not really, like, if you're looking for people that are, like, trying to get close to you, yeah, you're not seeing anyone. Okay. Okay, that's it. Alright, that's mostly that's I- then... Uh, so Marshweed is going to um, cast Lesser Restoration at um, uh, Sergei to get him depossessed. Hey. Um, okay. He's too far away from you. 60, he, uh, 60 feet. I got 60 feet. Oh. Never mind. That's interesting. Never mind. Yeah, alright. Um, but I didn't, the condition is blinded, death, I didn't and paralyzed, it. or poisoned. It can be. Uh, one disease, or one condition. It's one of those ones where they didn't write rules, so this is really entirely your call. Uh, <laughs> lesser restoration won't work like that. Um, go ahead and give me an intelligence check. Or no, a wisdom check. Okay. And if you if you make the save I'm, I'm, I have for you, then you won't cast it because you would know that it would. Okay. Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Wait, wisdom check or wisdom saving? Just check. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you cast it, hoping that it will um, cleanse Sergey. However, it doesn't. Darn. All right. Marshweed is just gonna. Um... Uh, run up to him, so that's 20 feet. Yeah. And then she's gonna, like, kind of, like, grab on his shell, like, come on! Take it out! <laughs> uh, give me, give me a persuasion check. <laughs> uh, persuasion. Okay, I'm gonna roll, uh, against with the ghost. Uh, the ghost is like, whoa, whoa, why are you grabbing on to- how are you grabbing on- oh. Sorry, and just kind of exits out of Sergey's mouth. Uh, at this time, I need you to make give me an intelligence save. 
intelligent save. Yes. Oof. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, I do have an advantage. Ah! Never mind. Uh, you are, you like, you're like so relieved and you look up towards, uh, towards the, towards the DJ and you see the lights and you're just kind of like, whoa. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah. So very, very pretty. And you're Charming, nice. thanks, baby. You get a ch- you get a chance to get out of it next turn. All right, Amber. Okay, um, I am going to continue along the uh, grave. The grave party. Fantastic. No, across the top of the instant. This of the party is to just die for. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, That's enough to make to make it. I need an intelligence save. So you know how to move him up there. Bit, kitty cat. Yes, the lights are really Ooh. pretty, but you manage to just be like, yeah, that's irrelevant here. Okay, and uh, I'm going to then use my action to move again. Uh, well, okay, that third one shouldn't be there. Uh, so right. 25. 25 works. So I moved another, um, 30 feet. And, uh, I'm, I start shouting at this necromancer, uh, G-Rave to turn it down, but I'm not sure he can hear me oh, still even over, over this music. I am it's considering just yeah. hurling sword at him, but I don't want to waste an action. I don't want to waste an action to do that. All right. All right. Then that brings us to uh, Britain. Okay. Um, where is everybody? It's Amber and Marshweed and. Sergey is also on the Sergey. I'm at the top. Vaughn's over here. Okay, cool. Arthur's still dancing up a storm. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's um, a zombie that's like pop locking next to you. <laughs> I, I admire his dance moves. And then I cast Fine Speed. Um, Fine what? And I'm gonna conjure. Oh, Does, doesn't that take ten minutes? Yeah, it does take ten, ten minutes. minutes. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yes. When yes, we it next is. take a short rest. The nice um, thing about it, it it's, a, it's one of those spells. If you have prep time, it's really good. It's really good. I figure, yeah. I'm going to just make my way on foot. One. Are you small or are you medium? Medium. I'm regular size. Okay. Right. So you're uh, not core size, but goblin size. I yeah. need to give me a wisdom check. All right. Be scared, be scared, because... Wisdom save 21. Yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> there's something that, like, that just, like, gets in, you, like, you, you take a big, deep breath, inhale, and, like, suddenly the music just sounds even better, and you just kind of want to, like, dance and twi- 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 to it, and then you're just like, no, wait, hold on, I have a goal. Very driven at this moment. I'm also gonna, uh, ca- uh, channel watcher's will and i believe that should give um all my friends advantage on intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws it's in 30 feet so i think i'm able to still catch amber 
in that. Yeah. Words. Watch as Bill as an action. Yeah. Uh, up to a, a number equal to your charisma modifier. All creatures have intelligence with many charisma saving throws. That's pretty good. For our current situation. Alright. Uh, is that it for you, Ritten? Um... You have like a second action, right? Or is that everything? Because you did try. Oh no, you didn't find something. So. Good. You good? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we're gonna go back to uh, Sergey. Do you want to give me another? <laughs> uh, no, wait. You're free. So what do you want to do? Okay. If you will permit, I will spend another key point to go bounce over by the good old DJ using another step of the wind. And if Marsh Reed will permit, I will scoop her up along for the ride. Well, she is not resisting. <laughs> so, so you're gonna go right there? 10 feet forward run and then 30 feet bounce because of step of the wind and my right. size and strength. Okay, so, so we're both just good, going good to shot. be over there. I need you to give me a constitution save. Alright. <laughs> Let's event. see how this mm. goes. <laughs> it is super loud right here. Like the music is vibrating <laughs> I mean, no. that's awesome. Right there, next to the music, and you're just, you're just trying to do it. What do you say to him? To, how do you Hello. get his attention? Hello, I'm Sergey. You may see me bounce over the lift. Ah. Uh, I very much like your music and your party. Much approved, <laughs> but neighbors maybe want to take down a couple notches, please. Alright, since since you made the constitution save, you're fine, you're not going to be moved anywhere. Give me a charisma check with advantage, because you are unaffected by the sound. Uh, I know this is the hour of my great regret. Yeah, this is the hour you look at the bard, it's like, where the hell is the bard? I love playing characters that talk to people, but I haven't built one made to talk to people in a while. <laughs> this one is negative for talking to people. Oh. So that's the seven. You have advantage. Okay. You do have advantage. You do have advantage, so roll, roll it again. That's, that's a 17. That's a 17. That is enough. Uh, so you, like, uh, like politely tap him on the shoulder and, uh, like, get his attention, and then you say your bit. And he, he's just like, what? Hold on, I, I can't hear you. The music's too loud. And turns it down. Uh, and then he's just like, so what can I do for you? You want a request? Uh, yes, and also, yes, but in different fashion. Firstly, could you play Monster Mash, his personal favorite, and seem to invigorate people in graveyard, but also the neighbors had mild noise complaint. Your party is great, your music is great, no one wants any cause of conflict or anything, but if you could maybe not scare their children, that would be wonderful. He looks you up and down and he's like, oh man, I'm sorry, I didn't know we were being that loud. Sure, I'll keep it. I'll keep it a little lower, and he lowers Thanks. the music a little bit, and then plays Monster Mash. Just you are a good fellow, and we'd much appreciate you. Keep up the great work, DJ Grave. Uh, any louder, and he'd wake the dead. Too late. <laughs> nope. Nope. He did the Monster Mash. The Monster Mash. <laughs> the graveyard <laughs> smash. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how tall Amber is at her doubled, but I think... 11? 
Oh. Okay. So, right. Marshweed on top of Sergei may be just shorter than you, then? <laughs> <laughs> So Marshweed is smaller, right? With no, no issue. Having uh, before we make it back, um, I'm gonna cast fog cloud uh, to just kind of hide them from view to give them some more muted and oh, a little bit more privacy. That. You're just like fog it's machine. also kind of creepy and like it's basically a fog machine. Oh yeah, no. You I'm see, sorry. you see lights like going through lasers and just like moving around. Uh, everyone's having a great, having a great time. With it. So. I'm going to make a nice. even better fire in the middle of it. What was that? Trust I wanted to... Yeah. My, po- my potion um, lasts for three hours. I, I don't really have a way to end it early, so I'm going to walk back to the village <laughs> with, you know, seven feet tall. Yeah, and everyone's like just kind of like looking at you, like, sort of side-eyed, like, was, was she that tall? Yes. All I want to do is see you turn into a giant woman. Giant, giant woman. woman. Fantastic. You guys are having a great time. Uh, everything is going really cool. Yeah. And, um, Perfect. Yeah. So-, so, just in case night takes any more twists and turns, I would like to take the next ten minutes to apply oil of slipperiness to herself. No, no need. Um, you guys, like, you get, you get back and there's no more complaints. Everybody is having a good time. You're having a wonderful, wonderful evening. And uh, the food that you eat, and eat has like, filled you with energy, the dancing and everything. You guys continue to party all the way until dawn. And uh, they, like, they... They pay you uh, for your services. Um, they they give you they give you only, uh, each of you receives a hundred gold, and um, hey. they tell you to to fill up your packs with food. Um, they like just like absolutely treat you. You're dancing. You're having a great time. And at dawn, uh, like things things get a little strange. Oh my. Yes. You see, at dawn, a mist, like, it, like as soon as the sun's rays hit the village, it begins to evaporate like so much mist, revealing ruins and, like, oh. like, like ruins. And the villagers, one by one, begin to fade out of the way. And Thomas just kind of, like, like shakes his head a little bit as if remembering something and then takes on a huge grin and waves at you and says that was an awful lot of fun come back next year to play some more and disappears and you were left in a clearing with a few foundation pieces sergey supposes that they did not lie to sergey he asked if it was fairy food. He never asked about demon ghost food. I knew it. I told but you I didn't in... know. make sure to ask that next time, for sure. Yes. Ar- Arthur checks his pack to make sure the food he packed away is still there. Uh, yeah, it's still there. It is still definitely there. It's all there. Everything's everything's fine. Um, your food's still there. The gold's still there. Everything that you got, all the magic items, is still there, uh, including um, for Arthur. You do have you you have something uh, very. Sm- you have a small set of headphones that you didn't have before. And what looks Arthur pulls these like strange or cake tongue, items out. Uh, and it says it says on it arcane anthems. And you open it up, and it's a spell specifically to play music, and put on a show. I assume that by dawn I'm back to normal. By dawn, you are back to normal, yes. Okay. I will miss having giant Amazon friend, but it's okay. It only take like 800 gold to get another one. (laughs) (laughs) There's still like cats and that possum in the middle. Uh, No, like I don't have a I didn't have a, another map for this. So okay. This is where we end. The only thing that was left was the bomb. Was and it's still bomb? ticking down. Tick. tick, tick. No! So when it goes off, it ends the world. 
until next year. This was fun event, and perhaps if we find ourselves an area, we'd take Spirit's invitation again, yeah? There yes. was some small injury, but not nearly as much as we got in Barovia. Those spirits were assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Barovia, yes. travel destination, you... zero, out of zero, zero out of five stars. Would not recommend. Into... <laughs> Barovia. I... Why did I join you people? <laughs> because we're good, nice people who help others. Except Barovia. <laughs> Screw those guys. Written is concerned for Amber. Oh, goodness. Speaking of helping others, I have enough food for now, and Cassandra is happy, just smiting evil. Do you want Sergei's hundred gold? He maybe take ten for getting new socks, but otherwise... And I'll just offer the other ninety to Amber. All right, for those of you who are watching you... or uh, watching later, uh, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Um, like, for, for please give a round of applause yourself. for yourself and your own, for all of our lovely players. And uh, if you like the music choices that were here tonight, the majority of them were by uh, by Arcane Anthems, uh, an individual you can look up on, on his Patreon. He does free RPG music for anybody to use for any of their games and that sort of thing. Uh, I had a great time. I hope you guys had a great time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That it was, was a blast. Thank you for running, right. and thank you guys hey. for being here. Could I make a quick announcement? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um... Hello, this is Susie here, or Susanna. Um, I am part of a D&D stream called Unexpectedly uh, Serious Turn. Um, we are having, we're streaming our first session on November 10th. So if you liked this, oh my God, then come check us out. Cause we're just like this. We're quirky, weird, gamer, nerd, geeky people just having a fun time <laughs> on Twitch playing a role playing game together. And um, yeah. Hey, uh, Jason, can you post that on uh, your Facebook? Oh, absolutely. Uh, post? Cool. We'll do it. Thanks again. And we'll stop the stream now. Okay.